podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this da, 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 is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired... Yes, I'm back from Hawaii. If you didn't get a show last week, that's why. This is a brand new one. Originally aired Saturday, July 24th, 2021 on the Premier Radio Networks. This is episode 1,813. Enjoy. Oh, hello. <laughs> that's my new opening. How do you like it? Oh, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. I should take a poll. Do you want me to begin the show the same way every time, just, you know, for comfort's sake, and it kind of settles you in, you kind of know. It's like what the reason you have a theme music and, and all that stuff. But lately, also, I think shows just start, right, nowadays. Movies, too. In my day, <laughs> back in the 18th century, movies would begin with a long credit roll and an opening sequence and stuff, and then this movie would begin. Then they started putting stuff right before the credit roll. Now they don't even bother. Oops. Sorry, I didn't mean to knock you there. They didn't even bother. They just go, yeah, we're doing it. It's a movie. You can find out who made this later. I noticed, though, the studios still have the boom, 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 boom. Dur, 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 dur. They still do that. So I should have a poll. Do you want me just to go right into it? Boom. Or do you want me to go, well, hey, 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 how are you today? Welcome. I'm the tech guy. This is the show where we talk about computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches, all that jazz. 8888, ask Leo the phone number. I guess I kind of have to do that part, the phone number. 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. That's because it's a call-in show, so, you know, you need the number. Uh, and if and by the way, yes, toll free in the U.S. and Canada, but toll free worldwide. Really, if you use Skype to call it, it shouldn't cost you anything. Eight 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 two seven five five three six. Toll free from anywhere. Anywhere. Somebody say I should begin like uh, Fal Fat Albert begin. Well, hey, hey, hey. No, that's terrible. That's scary. Or with a lion's roar. Rawr. No, the chat room's got all sorts of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're the chat room. The word of the week this week. You ready for the word of the week? Prosody. Prosody. P R O S O D Y. It, uh, it comes from, you know, um, the original use of prosody was uh, the pattern and rhythm of sound in poems. But nowadays, in linguistics, it's concerned with how speech sounds, not with the letters, the consonants, the, uh, the vowels, the, the actual phonetics of it, but what makes each speaker unique, the intonation, the stress, the, the rhythm, those things also known as the suprasegmentals. <laughs> but I think prosodies, as hard as it is to <laughs> pronounce, is even easier than suprasegmentals. But from it, you can, you know, you listen, you hear somebody, you know if they're happy, they're sad, you know, they're, they're excited, uh, if they're being sarcastic, that kind of thing. Prosody. The reason I mention it is it's the latest, it's the hottest thing now in computer science... Because we're trying to, that was, that was, that was my, I didn't say anything. Did I say, did I, oh, I said the C word. You know what? Computer, change your wake word. Okay, you can choose from Amazon or which of these do you like? None of them. So there is a new wake word for the Amazon Echo, but they're even better. There's a new voice. I, 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 let me try it again. Computer, change your voice. Let's see if we can get the new voice. Okay, you're all set. I'll be the voice you hear when you speak to this device. Do you hear that? If you'd like to change how you wake me up, you can also change your wake word. Do you hear that? It's a, it's a new male voice. Actually, Amazon is a little behind and all. I don't know that. <laughs> change your wake word. Okay, you can choose from... Amazon or a which of these do you like? Ziggy. Sorry, 
I can only help change the wake word to one of these. Amazon or X. Hmm. So at home, I can make it Ziggy. That's <laughs> that's another another wake word. They've just added Ziggy, and I like Ziggy. Somebody was saying the only Ziggy I know is a woman, and and I don't. Apparently, Ziggy goes with the male voice. But Amazon is not as fancy schmancy as Google and uh, Microsoft and Apple. They're getting really good at prosody. What is so? This is why prosody is an important word because you take. What is a, you know, computer-generated voice? It's a little robotic. Says everything properly, but it is... I'm not quite sure how to help you with that. Okay, now you can shut up. <laughs> I pressed the button. <laughs> it just the shut up button is really handy on those things. So uh, I, said the, I said the C word. I said computer, and it, it wakes up because I said I made it. That was a mistake, by the way. You should never make your Amazon Echo wake word be computer. Ziggy's good. I don't think I'm going to say Ziggy much in real life. But computer, I say half the time. So that's not a good wake word, at least for me. Prosody. Back to prosody. So we take a synthesized voice, which... Because our brains are so finely tuned, such finely tuned instruments to the real world, this for environmental reasons, for survival, I guess you should say, reasons. Because if, you know, you can't tell that that uh, person is about to schnocker you, <laughs> you can't tell they're angry, it's uh, challenging, to say the least. Um, to, to, you know, it's a survival problem. So we're, we're very finely tuned to our environment for a number of reasons. You know, mostly survival, but, but in a number of ways, I guess I should say. But voice is one of them. And so we can tell pretty easily that that's not a real voice. So what's happening? Oh, interesting. Companies are working hard to create machine voices that sound human using prosody. So they take the robotic voice, the voice that's... It's not, it's not even robotic. It might be perfectly formed. You can kind of tell that that Amazon Echo voice was, was not real, right? It was, too, it was too perfect, right? So they take, they take these robotic voices and they apply human prosody. They actually record real people. Google first did this. I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago. You could have Issa Rae, comedian, or John Legend, the singer, be your Google voice. And the way they did it, they brought Issa and John into the studio and had them record a bunch of sentences. Not, not every sentence in the world. Just a, you know, I don't know, an hour worth of sentences. And they took the prosody, the inflection, the intonation, the, the syllable stress, all of that stuff, and made it into uh, better voices. And uh, it sounded like John Legend was waking you up in the morning. So it was still a little weird. Apple's doing the same thing. Apple has now some new voices. If you're on an iPhone, you can go to the American voices. And, you know, there's the traditional Siri voice. I don't know if we're going to hear this. Let me, let me see. I'll have to turn it up a little bit. The traditional uh, Siri voice, which, you know, you, you know how she sounds. Hi, I'm Siri. Actually, Choose the voice you'd like me to use. That's a guy, isn't it? That's voice one. Here's voice two. Hi. I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Now, that's the same machine-generated text, but you, but you, applying prosody, she sounds kind of perky. Here's another one. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. He, I scared my daughter because I, uh, I, I, was, I was doing something, and uh, that voice came up, and she said, who's that? I said, well, that's voice three. Sounds like somebody I know. I know. It does, doesn't it? Here's voice four. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. That's, the, I guess that's, is that the more traditional one? I don't know. I'm in the variety voices. <laughs> oh, you get variety is uh, American, Australian. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to but use. But you don't get voice one, two, three, and four with, uh, with Australian. Only with American. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. So I kind of like voice three. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Kind of jaunty, isn't he? It's kind of <laughs> so that's prosody, our word of the day. That's the uh, latest thing, and it makes—I think it makes a huge difference. Did you see the movie Her? 
Scarlett Johansson is the computer assistant in uh, in his ear, in Joaquin Phoenix's ear. You know, he's got this little earpiece. And it sounds like Scarlett Johansson. It is, because in the movie, Scarlett Johansson did the voiceover. But it's not too far off where Siri might sound like Scarlett Johansson. The next step was a lot harder. Because in her, these artificial intelligences were like human. They were really, she was flirting with him. She, she got him to do things. And then is, uh, is it okay to do a spoiler for a movie that's like six years old? I can do it now, right? At the end, she says, I'm, see you later. I'm going to go join the other AIs in AI world. Because you guys, you humans move way too slow. And I can't, I'm bored. Wow. That was, uh, that was quite the diss. Or as the kids call it, was it what do they call it now? Subtweeting? I don't know what the kids call it. That's my problem. <laughs> I just don't know. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the phone number. Uh, someday soon, probably. We're already, by the way, the reason this I'm aware of this in my business is, and I think I mentioned this before, voiceover artists are starting to be put out of work because they're bringing in voiceover artists as saying, sign here, we're going to record your prosody. And then we won't be needing you anymore because we'll just have the computer deliver the advertisements. And I've heard some of these from a variety of companies. They're good. Actually, there's a big controversy going on right now because there's a new documentary about Anthony Bourdain. Love Anthony Bourdain, the chef. And oh, I just adore him. And there was some stuff he'd written but never said they did the documentarian didn't have recordings so he cr he used basically a real fake of the voice using anthony bourdain's prod prosody attached to a computer generated text so that it's indistinguishable from anthony bourdain saying it and they put it in the documentary with and of course this is controversial without telling anybody anthony bourdain's uh, partner and heir says ah, it's not okay they said they asked permission. They didn't ask me permission to do that. This creepy. Well, get ready because who knows? This might, I might still be in Hawaii. This might not, this might be Leo's prosody attached to some computer answering your questions. <clears throat> and honestly, if it does a good job, who cares? <laughs> except, except the voiceover artists who are no longer getting any work. This is the new, uh, this is the new Memorex ad. Is it real? Or is it prosody? 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the phone number. 888-827-5536. We'll talk tech, you and me, in just a second. And by the way, if you hear something on the show, you don't have to write it down because we'll write it down for you. James DeRuvo, my scribe, who, as far as I know, is real. Could maybe not. I don't know. Is writing it all down. Put it up at techguylabs.com. That's the website. Everything we talk about, all the links, all that stuff, techguylabs.com. She's not busy. She's on the telephone line. It's Kim Schaffer, the unbreakable phone angel. Not a simulation. Not a robot. As far as I know. <laughs> I would send the robot today if I could. <laughs> oh, I know the feeling. Sometimes you just wish you had a robot to Sometimes do that. Sometimes I yeah. wish I had a robot or a yeah. clone. <laughs> what do you think? Like 100 years from now, like we'll just sit at home and let our robots do our work. Yeah. And we can control them. Maybe we'd like, if something goes wrong, you know, like when you drive a self-driving vehicle, you could be the safety driver mm -hmm. of your robot. If something goes wrong, you dial in. You go, what? <laughs> what? I'm tanning. What? <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. Tell that caller no. Never. No, never mind. <laughs> and then you go back to tanning. Something like that. Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> That's the future. And then you keep doing that. Pretty soon, you don't even bother showing up. You just, it's like, uh, let the game play on, man. Get your sim. Just go let it play. You set it up. And hope it does a good job. Hope it does a good job. <laughs> Check back in at the end. Did we win? Uh, yeah. So, Kim, you are you didn't come in last week, right? I did not. Oh, good. Okay. No, no. no I was living the mansion life in Casadero. I saw a picture <laughs> and I thought, what the heck? Yeah. How much are we paying, Kim? No, I didn't pay for that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
who should I talk Let's to? Let's talk first? to Cheryl. She has not been able to access her email for the past couple uh, weeks, so she needs your help. <laughs> gonna add it. Add to this list. <laughs> add to the. Don't ask me about your printer. Oh, now email. Don't ask me about your router. Don't ask me don't to ask get you into email. your Facebook. No, I'm always happy to take these calls. I only mean that because it's sometimes it's hard to. It's very difficult. Solve. Yeah. Let's see what I can do to help. Thank you, Kim. Hello, Cheryl Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Leo. Thank you for taking my call. Um, yeah, I haven't been able to get in my sbcglobal.net um, email for two weeks, and I've tried everything that's on the YouTube videos and every website, and I get nowhere. And so I don't, am I supposed to give up ever getting this account back? I don't know what happened. I can't get it on my phone or my laptop. So... Wow, you have what's called a legacy email. Because as you know, SBC, Southwestern Bell, was sold to AT&T. Uh -huh. And then AT&T decided to outsource its email to Yahoo. And then something mm -hmm. else went wrong. In fact, we get a lot of calls from people who are using AT&T mail. Same problem. So I think what happened is that your sbcglobal.net login finally expired because this happened ages ago, right? That, that, oh, okay. Yeah, they didn't tell you, right? They, <laughs> no. They, they didn't get a hold of you and say, hey, you know, Cheryl, <laughs> we aren't SBC Global anymore. You, it's funny, uh, here in San Francisco, the San Francisco Giants Stadium was built and named the Pac Bell Park but then Pac Bell got bought by SBC, so it became SBC Park. Now it's AT and T Park, same company, but you know, new name. So I think the problem is now that you have to go to AT and T Mail. I th they should have, oh, you know, they probably sent you an email <laughs> saying, yeah, <laughs> saying, yeah, one of the verification codes says they've sent it to my email. Well, I can't get in. Yeah, I can't get in my email. Yeah. Um, so, um, I, I, you know, I'm guessing again, I'm guessing cause, uh, when you say SBC global, I'm going, wow, I haven't heard. That's like saying I have uh, a Thomas Edison.com and I'm wondering <laughs> if Tom is alive still. So <laughs> it goes that far, but not quite, not that quite. Um, I, so one thing you might want to try is looking at AT&T and using your same login to go to uh, sign in or email.att.com and see if you can sign in there. My suspicion is that's what's happened. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. It's. I think that they with that they probably have been sending you emails for years, <laughs> saying, you know, this isn't going to last forever. Uh. And and then and finally they cut it. I would guess they cut it off. Let me just see. I'm looking to see. SBC still functions as a subsidiary of AT and T, but the SBC Global Email Service has since been rebranded under the AT and T name, and accounts have migrated to AT and T Yahoo. I've tried both. I've tried ATT. I've tried Yahoo. And then there's another name on there now, currently. <laughs> this is such a mess. So it is one of the reasons, I'm just going to say this, I don't recommend using your internet service provider's email. I should have said that. We're now uh, on the podcast, but not on the radio show anymore. But I should have said that on the radio show, because that's really, that word should get out. Stop using your ISP because ISPs are getting so bought and sold, transitioning, blah, blah, blah. So it's risky to use your ISP. The you could go out, best thing to do would be go out and pay for an email service. Uh, we treat email okay. like it should always be free. It should just come along for the ride. But it's it's important. And you now know how important it is because you're not getting it. It's, it's a very important communications medium. And it's cheap to buy email from a company. My favorite company is fastmail.com. It's, it's like 10 bucks a year or something. It's not expensive. So, Ooh. yeah, and I think by doing that, you're kind of guaranteeing this isn't going to ever happen again. So let's see what we can do about SBC Global. You got to, you know, all your friends use that address. So 
The original email site, sbcglobal.net. Go ahead. That's one I just use for business. The friends, family, and people I work with are on a different email. Ah, good. They're Thank goodness. Gmail. Gmail is going to be around for a while. But again, it's free. And so anything free is always at risk a little bit, right? So I guess, do you use your browser to get it or do you use Outlook or some other email program to get it? My browser... Like, do you launch Internet Explorer or Edge or Firefox or Chrome to get your email? Chrome. You use Chrome. So that's a browser. Yeah. So the if you go to sbcglobal.net, it, it, it will redirect to something else. <laughs> I think what really has happened is it, you're already in the second stage of transition because 18, we get a lot of calls about this now from people who have Yahoo att.yahoo.com address is not working anymore either. Uh -huh. So, okay. it says, I'm looking at the sbcglobalemail.net. Due to a series of migrations and integrations, you will no longer be able to create a new email address with the sbcglobal.net suffix. Instead, you have to create an AT&T address. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm currently, yeah, that. currently is the other one. Currently.att.yahoo.com. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I hate these people. I hate them so much with a passion that burns like the flame. Um, you'll have to enter. Shut that account. How would I shut that account down and get rid of it? Um, well, you've given out that address. If what you you kind of want to get back into it, so that you can at least oh. set up a vacation style email that says, "Hey, thanks for sending me email to this address. <laughs> I no longer use it." please send it to this address and then you could also have it forwarding automatically to your Gmail address or whatever address you wanted to set up for your business. I tried that, but you have to, um, you have to be able to log in to do it. Into the email. Yeah, you have to get in there. You only have to get in one more time. <laughs> uh, so you're telling me to try again. No, uh, I'm looking at this long. I will, if you go to sbcglobalnetemail.net, what a great name. Um, there's a whole long page about what to do. Oh. All right. Okay. So try to see if any of that works. I'm so sorry. Okay. I don't, it's not your fault, Cheryl. These people <laughs> are vultures. Oh. And it's still Pack Bell Park to me. Thanks, Cheryl. I got to run. Thank you so very much. My pleasure. Take care. What is hip? This cat right here. I don't know why I say that, Scott. Neither one of us qualifies as hip. Scott Wilkinson, he is our hip Keller, a hip guy who is in charge of our home theater and AV information. Hello, Scotty. Hello, You're hip. Leo. Are you hip? Do you consider yourself? I guess I'm totally hip. No young person calls himself hip anymore, so I guess we can <laughs> appropriately co-opt that word. Sure, absolutely. Now there are hipsters. Those are, those are youngsters. No, but we, we as oldsters call them hipsters. Do you know I what I'm guess saying? They don't call themselves. No, hipsters, yeah. it's the guy with a man bun ordering this. You know, half calf, half decaf with a twist. <laughs> that guy carrying yeah, his yeah, yeah. his laptop so he could sit down on one cup of coffee and spend four hours at the Starbucks. That guy, yeah, yeah. that's a hipster, but he don't, he don't call himself a hipster. We that's do. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so I can I can say I guess we are hip. We are Yeah, hip. we are totally hip. Someday it'll be broken hips, but that's that's in the future. <laughs> God willing. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you cough. <laughs> way, way far in the future. Yeah, yeah exactly. Way, way. So, um what's up in the uh, world of AV? <clears throat> I'm sorry. I made, sorry. I made Scott you, laugh too hard. And you did. Well, plus the fact that I was in beautiful Santa Cruz, California, right. where the air was clean. Yeah. And now I'm back in L.A. where it it's isn't. It's not. Yeah. I was talking to some people in, uh, in on the East Coast who are getting smoke from the Oregon fires. Yes. Can you believe it's that? crazy. It is crazy. Oh, man. Well, anyway, um, I wanted to mention that, of course, we have the Olympics going on. Oh, yes. And, I've heard of that. <clears throat> yeah. It's, it's a little it's, weird. Nobody's in the audience. Nobody's in the audience. Do you watch the opening ceremonies ever? I do. I do. Absolutely. They are so strange. Every year, I th Britain was weird. Beijing was weird. Tokyo. I thought Beijing was beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah, but yeah it was beautiful, but weird. I yeah. liked, for instance, 
now the uh, the cauldron where the Olympic flame is burning, burning yeah. in Tokyo is is this strange mechanical robotic flower that opens up. It's cool. Yeah, but it's weird. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's cool. And I got tears in my eyes when I saw Team USA coming out there. But yeah. but uh, I just think it's – I don't know why. I think part of it is with art. If it's going to be art, you can't, you can't do the th anything that anybody's ever done before, which is by definition well, weird, right? <laughs> that's all that's left. I guess that's true. That's yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And they do try to do something new every every time. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the problem. And that may yeah. be part of the problem. Just have yeah, people exactly. in togas come out. March around. It's okay with me. So, you anyway, want to watch the Olympics. You want to watch them as best you can. I think that's exactly where you're going with right. this. That's yes. where I'm going with this. Yes. And this year, some people are able to watch it in 4K HDR. What? How? Yep. Well, <clears throat> you Do there some people live in Tokyo? Well, in Tokyo, you can watch it in 8K. Oh, <laughs> wow. But only in Tokyo. The only place you can watch it in 8K is in Japan. Okay. So where can I watch it in 4K and in the US? <clears throat> in the 4 in 4K, you can watch it if you have Comcast. Uh-huh. And and their X1. Oh, they did this last time. I remember. Top box, yeah. yeah. Exactly. They're effectively they're streaming it. Correct. Yeah. Correct. <clears throat> That's can exactly I, if right. I use the NBC app or the Peacock app, can I see it in 4K? Mm -mm. No. Oh, well, uh, no, I don't believe so. I I, I installed the NBC. Which is ironic because Comcast app. owns NBC. By the I way. know, I yeah. know. Uh, but I I installed the um, the NBC Sports app, which I, I saw an article in Wirecutter uh, by my friend Chris Heinenen who. Uh, said that uh, f the NBC Sports app, you should be able to see it in 4K HDR. But, and so I installed it, and you have to sign in on a computer with Using your credentials. your Comcast account? I bet. No, no, no. no. Well, you're, what, whatever your, your provider oh, is. Oh, okay. Mine, mine is Dish Network. To prove you pay for it on cable. To, exactly. Yeah. So I did that, and I went to watch the opening ceremonies, and I was met with a message that said, your provider is not providing this <laughs> don't you need comcast i do need comcast and can i get it where i live no probably not no in fact that's the problem comcast has a and all the cable companies have regional monopolies so you just have to yep. be in a comcast area or yep. you or you're yep. out of luck yep yep now there is one other option a couple other options one is youtube tv so you have to you have to be uh signed in or you have to be have a subscription to youtube tv which is like 65 bucks a month. Uh, I think it's even more now. It keeps going up every minute. Yeah. Right, right. But that's that's, you know, live TV and it's uh CNET I think is it's their choice for uh, online streaming live TV. And then to get 4K HDR, it's another 20 bucks a month. Not but yes, but that hasn't started yet. So you can do it now and then cancel. <laughs> Exactly. They're, they they are giving you a free thirty day trial on so that. You can sign up and then cancel. Yeah, I saw right. that, and you know what? They they're, they're going to have me because I have a four K HDR TV. Mm -hmm. I am a YouTube TV subscriber. I agree with CNET. It's the best of the over the top. You know, basically, yep. it's cable TV at a it's cable cab TV cable price. Cable replacement, but yeah. it's over the internet. Yeah. And uh, I like the DVR. I am DVRing all the Olympic stuff on YouTube TV. So oh. I'll I'll pay for the up. Upscale. Don't I don't know pay if it's for the gonna, upgrade. Yeah, I don't know if it's absolutely gonna, yeah. because HDR uh, is going to be a big improvement. Yeah, uh, even more so than 4K over 1080p. You know, we've talked about. So, this there, is there time. any broadcast? For, like, if I'm on, isn't that the promise of ATSC 3.0? Yes, it is. 4K. It is. And, you know, and it's that's interesting. I haven't seen anything yet that indicates whether or not anybody in an ATSC 3.0 market, and that, again, is also only available in certain locations. And with certain equipment, obviously. And with certain equipment. Yeah. Very few TVs now have an ATSC 3.0 tuner in them. They're this even doing, over the, if you have that, they're even doing Dolby Atmos. Yes, yes. So when Exactly the, right. When uh, Naomi uh, Osaka hits the golf ball or the tennis ball, it's going to it's going to go behind you. <laughs> That's right, and overhead. Or above you, and <laughs> around you. Yep, and, and dig this, NHK, which is the Japanese broadcaster, so in Japan you can see 8K, Yeah. 
not only that, they're going to they're going to the sound is going to be 22.2 channels. <laughs> um, so you, wow. You need you need 22 speakers around. <laughs> <laughs> or they'll simulate. They can simulate that, right? I, I assume, I suppose. But nobody has an 8K TV, so this is going to be, this is for well, very, viewing in some special theater yeah, kind of yeah. A setting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are some 8K TVs that are available. You can buy a Samsung. Is the whole, so it LG. sounds to me like the entire Olympics are being shot in 8K. No. No. <laughs> one, one would think, but one would be wrong. Yeah, one would think, but one would be wrong. There are some 4K cameras, but a lot of it, actually the 4K feed that you will get on YouTube or Comcast uh, is actually up converted from 1080p. <sighs> so there, what? So it isn't really 4K. I'm afraid not. I'm afraid not. Is it, it's, is it HD, real HDR or simulated HDR? No, it's real HDR. Okay. Well, the that might be are, more, that's maybe more important. And that's important. more important. Yeah. It's var vastly more important, in my opinion. So if you so. go to NBCOlympics.com slash 4K, yep. there is yep. a table yep. <laughs> that shows you where, in which look, and it's market by market. That's right. Like if you're in that's Albuquerque, right. Santa Fe, you can get it on Comcast or YouTube TV. Right. But you if can you're get YouTube TV everywhere. Everywhere. In every market. You just but have to the pay other for ones, it. You just have to pay for it. Yeah, uh, it, it's available also on Fubo TV, well, but not in go. HDR. But not in HDR. <laughs> and that's in Los Angeles and New York and uh, Dallas and, and a few places, big yeah. big metros. Well, yep. thanks for uh, making that clear as mud. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's in 4K UHD. Thank you, Scott Wilkinson, Home Theater Geek, TechHive.com, Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy. 4K mud. 4K mud, super clear mud. <clears throat> so I mean, I I yes. wonder if I'm DVRing it if I'm going to get it in 4K. I should go You're, to my you, uh, YouTube TV has a DVR function. Yeah. Oh God, they have the best DVR function. Oh, you know, I've got to sign up for that. I haven't. It's done worth it for that because you could just there. You could say, I want all the Olympics. I just want these sports. You don't even have to know a time or anything. It just has wow. a list. Wow. And then you can just watch them. Is but there a limit to the number of hours it'll Maybe there's you know you get you get 5 DVRs so every user oh 4K plus add. Okay, I'm going to add that for 20 freaking dollars a month. Mm -hmm. You're one month. So I wonder if retroactively my recordings will now be in 4K. I would plus. doubt it. <laughs> no, cuz it cuz they're not really recording it. Scott, no. I want to I want to reveal something to you. Yes. <laughs> they're not they're, they're not I, really making a recording in my that's, account. You know that's true. That, yeah. and in that in and for that reason, it's probably going to just be upgraded, right? It'll play it back. will be. It'll sure. play back. However, yeah. it they're back. storing it. The year after, yeah, they're storing one it. copy and then they're flipping a switch. So yeah. beach volleyball, yeah. Now it says 4K. Boom. Boom. But, but, but is it, boom. Is it in HDR? Is the question. You mean it might not be? Well, I hope it is, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I don't. I don't know. For example, on NBC Sports, the NBC Sports app, there's no indication of which ones are HDR and which ones. No, are. nor is there on the YouTube app. It just says 4K. But my TV, if it gets a, 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 a HDR signal, will say it'll, it'll HDR flash briefly. A thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'll I'll report back. Please do. I yeah. want to know. Because it looks I'm, like I'm all my recordings have now been converted to 4K automatically. There you go. Boom. So I could see the opening ceremony, weird though uh, it might be, in 4K. Weird though it might be. I, I actually liked much of the opening ceremony. Uh, there was I, some neat I, stuff. There was some neat stuff in there. I love the Mount Fuji thing that they've got there. I thought that... that Set piece looked really good. I loved the opening thing with the with the single guy crouching down and the kind of shadow behind him. Yeah, uh, with a with the light, with turning into a little little turning flower, turning into a plant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I th I thought that was very nice. Um, I love the juxtaposition of traditional <clears throat> Japanese garb and stuff with with sort of modern. Punk that was cool. Yeah. Style stuff. Yeah, I mean, the, I thought that was Yeah, the cool. dance ceremony thing the at the end. The dance part yeah, of it. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you're right. It wasn't that weird. It wasn't as <laughs> weird as some.
Yeah, yeah. there have been weirder ones. Weird. Yeah, you remember Sochi and and their their five rings and one of them didn't ignite. Oh, I was the whole was time I'm watching fail. this. I'm saying, don't drop the torch. Don't. I hope it lights. I hope I could just see that robotic flower, not you know, like sort of opening, then going right. Eh. Right, right. Uh, too much, you know, I'm just going, please let it open. Uh, <laughs> please. And then um, what was the other thing? Oh, I did like, and it was more analog, the way they made the rings with the with the Tyco yeah, drummers pulling the ropes. And I pulling thought, that was the ro really I thought cool. that was really nice. That was actually a nice combination of um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of of old traditional and new. And new. Yeah, 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 I yeah. really liked how they did the rings. That, that kind of choked me up a little bit. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a crier. <laughs> um, you want to stick around for the top? Sure, happy to. That would be nice. That would be nice. Absolutely. <sighs> Mike Heiss says he's heard the 22 speaker surround. He heard it at CES. He says a yeah. little much. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I, I heard it at CES too. Uh, and he's, uh, NHK always has a booth, actually at NAB as well. Yeah. And they, they did an 8K projection system with a 22.2 yeah. sound system. I thought it was beautiful. Talk to you in a bit. Mm-hmm. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I will confirm, because uh, I, I subscribe to YouTube TV at great expense, uh, I have to say. And I still have a cable subscription, so I'm just nuts. It really is as much as a cable. You know, it's like 65 bucks a month is a, subs it's a cable subscription. But in my neck of the woods, in most areas in the U.S., you get the local stations, you get a a very capable DVR, you know, very software. For instance, uh, we were in Hawaii and Lisa said, we're going to miss the Olympics. I said, no, we're not. And I fired up because I had internet, uh, tv.youtube.com, already a subscriber. And I checked the boxes of the sports. You could, you actually could, there was a box that said, just you want everything? And we just DVR everything for you. But I checked the particular sports boxes and the opening ceremony and that kind of thing. Uh, but at the time I hadn't yet upgraded to the 4K so when Scott mentioned that, I went to my settings on YouTube TV, and yes, lo and behold, for an additional $20 a month, making this now $85 a month, that's a cable bill at least, right? Not including anything else, HBO or anything else. Base plan plus H4K um, is it's kind of mind-boggling, $85 a month. So I wasn't going to do it. But now I'm thinking I'd like to see the Olympics. So I checked the box because you get 30 days free. And then I just went back to checking my uh, my DVR, my library, and all of the stuff that I had asked it to record is now 4K. So that's neat. You can ret It's retroactively 4K. So there you, there you have it. I think also, if you do that, you can watch it in real time. Because I notice, I'm looking at the opening ceremony recording, and it says Friday, 3.55 a.m., which was 8 p. 8, 7.55 p.m. Tokyo time. So uh, I think that it's actually recording them, like, live. Which means you probably could watch it sooner than broadcast, I'm guessing. 8888 ask Leo. So there you go. If if, uh, if you want to get it uh, on your uh, TV, I guess it's if you don't have Comcast and Xfinity. I tried the X1 method four years ago, five years ago, I guess, and uh, it was it was very stuttery. Even though I had thought I had pretty good internet access, you really have to have high speed internet access to do that. And it was very stuttery and not not very good experience. And I don't know if that was the X1 box, which I think at the time was a little underpowered. They've since upgraded it. Or just, you know, you needed a lot more bandwidth than I had. Jim's next from Whittier, California. Hello, Jim. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Leo. How's it going today? It's great. How are you? Good. So I heard that caller a few minutes ago who called in with her, I believe it was SBC Global email. Yeah, issue. yeah. And you were talking about... And I, which I didn't know, but you talked about that uh, AT and T took it over, and then Yahoo hosts their service, for lack of a better term. Yeah, and then there's trouble in paradise there because Yahoo's been sold again, and oh, it's just uh, it's it's a mess. And I think that because of this, uh, you know, the way this works is the servers get moved. Sometimes they retain it, and I'm I, I am seeing some people in the chat room saying, "No, I still get my SBCGlobal.net email. It's working." 
But I don't know if that's right. universal, and I don't know how long that will be for. So it'd probably be prudent to investigate. Are you are you an SBCGlobal.net guy? No, I w I'm an ATT.net guy. Okay. Like the late 90s. Yeah. <laughs> and I had the same issue where all of a sudden I couldn't get Just my stopped email. working. Yeah. I stopped working. I tried resetting. I, I tried a customer service phone number I found online. And it was really frustrating. I spent, I think, three days trying to deal with it. And then I came across a phone number for a U.S.-based AT&T service center in Tustin, California, Oh, where I called this number that I found, and a guy <laughs> helped me, and 30 seconds later, my email worked. Amazing! Yeah. Do you want to give out that number, or is that your super secret? I, I'd be happy to give it out if you're comfortable with it going sure, out. Sure, why not? Or I could give Sure. So when I had this problem, I, I called the number. It was 1-800-772-3140. Now, everybody, don't all call it at once. <laughs> wait, right. wait a little bit. 772-3140. It's an 800 number. Correct. And it was AT&T Service Center based in Tustin, California. Well, if you're in, the, if you're in Southern California, that'd probably be, you know, good enough. You're in Whittier. That's close enough, right? Right. Yeah. I don't, you know, that's weird that you had to do some detective work to find out who to call. And I think probably what it really is, and I've had this experience before with these big telcos, there's one guy or gal who kind of knows what to do, and the rest of them exactly. don't, and you just got the right guy. Yeah, I think initially I was sent to an overseas service center of some yeah. kind, Yeah. And I, and I just kept hunting and hunting and hunting, and eventually I found it on an AT&T. What a nightmare. Uh, forum page where somebody else would have a similar problem. Well, as I mentioned, we've had calls from people who have AT&T's Yahoo service who are having problems as well. And I'm I'm guessing it's not supposed to be that way or they would have let you know, but anytime you've got server migrations, you know, things can hiccup. So I'm yep. glad you... And so you, you still have the old email address. You haven't lost that. No, I have not lost it. I Good. was able to get it back, and everything was still there. Like Good. I said, I had it for twenty something years, and it's yeah. you know, every literally every every account is tied to that email address. So Cheryl, if you're listening still, I'm sure she is because it's got to be you know frustrating. Eight hundred seven seven two. 3140 at least try that number i you know i'm thinking the number's not the magic the the magic was you got this guy but uh it i guess that's also the advice i give frequently with any customer service if you if it doesn't work the person seems clueless you're not getting help just say thanks hang up and try again just try a different number you'll get another rep and eventually you might you know it's kind of a <laughs> kind of a lottery, but you might get the rep that knows what to do. Right, you said lottery, I was thinking crap shoot, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually, okay, so that number, boy, Scooter X, you're good, is telling me that that is AT&T's Disability and Aging Center. But you know what? In this case, the disability is, I can't get my freaking email. So yeah. I think it's fair. Just don't all call it at once. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Leo. Hey, it's great to hear from you. Thank you for the help. Uh, and I, on behalf of Cheryl, Jim, I, I thank you. Uh, we're, you know, that's kind of what this show is. We're all in this together. The tech industry doesn't do a very good job, do they? This thing, these things happen all the time. And uh, that's our job together, not just me, not my job. Our job uh, is to help each other kind of navigate these choppy, choppy waters. And again, I just want to say, I think the the best way to do email, uh, ultimately, and then this is kind of an advanced thing, I guess, is to go to a domain registrar. Uh, it doesn't matter who. Um, I use Hover.com, GoDaddy's fine. There's quite a few of them. Google has a domain service. And get a domain name for your email. It could be your family name, but get an, or your business name, right? If you have a business, your email should not be at yahoo.com. It should really be at yourbusiness.com, you know, at leosfrankfurters.com. So go and get leosfrankfurters.com. And uh, once you get that domain name, then, depending on how fancy you want to get, some, some, many of the companies, GoDaddy and Hover, for instance, will offer email at that domain name. So if you don't mind spending the five bucks a month or 10 bucks a month to do that, just do that. I, I, my actual recommendation is 
don't even do that because you, what you really want to do is separate the, the email address from the email service. And think of the email address as a, as a forwarding box that automatically forwards the email to whatever you want to use. That way you can move around. So if sbcglobal.net goes down and you don't like it, you move to somewhere else, gmail.com. But the key is you're not telling all your friends and family, oh, I've changed my address. You don't have to because you're still leosfrankfurters.com. You're still leo at leosfrankfurters. Please don't email that. I, that probably is real and I don't. <laughs> leo at leosfrankfurters.com. Email or something like that. Email. I, if I were going to do it, it'd be Leo's hot dogs. I'm just saying. But anyway, or maybe even Leo's dogs. I have I have a number of custom email addresses, and if you're sophisticated enough to figure out how to do this, and it, it, there are tutorials online, then that's the way I would do. It. Yeah, Apple did the same thing. Doctor Mom's saying that HP is saying November. Apple uh, is putting it off. A lot of companies are uh, are putting off the uh, the switch. Um, and of course, Scott Wilkinson, I guess you get to continue to work ho at home. <laughs> I've been doing that for the last 30 years. <laughs> I know. It's so funny. You know, we it really uh, change for me. We, much we tech people. This is the, this is our way of life. Right. Mm -hmm. I was, gl I was glad I could continue to use the, uh, studio. I just said no one else can. Right. <laughs> well, you've got several distinct separate rooms i mean your studio is yeah so john and uh kim are in another studio so yeah. we we did have to have a skeleton crew because i can't do the show without a skeleton crew but right. i was able to say because i own it <laughs> <laughs> no one else may come in and you know we invited everybody but everybody came back this week it was so nice to see everybody. So nice. But now i'm worried I, I, like maybe I'll we shouldn't it. have done that right well i'm i'm worried uh, in particular, uh, the, I've seen a number of news stories that the the, the upswing, the surge, is going to peak in October. Yeah, we're going to see another lockdown. I think we're going to see. However, lockdown. we did verify every one of our. You know, we said you can come back, but only if you're fully vaccinated. And so mm -hmm. everybody in the studio is fully vaccinated, no, which is good. And I feel like that's okay. We are. Unfortunately, we still have we have people coming by all the time, especially during the summer months, saying, "Can we yeah. get a tour?" And we have to stand on the other side of the glass door and say, no, we're not open. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when, when we get deliveries and stuff, we have to be very careful. Um, but at least the people in, in this building are fully yeah. vaccinated. Yep. Yep. I'm, I'm, I was hoping, I've been hoping I could do a real tube of Christmas this year. And yeah. now I'm not 100%. Sounds scary. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, 100 so tuba players on stage, cheek by jowl. Blowing their horns. Blowing their horns. And a thousand people in the audience singing their hearts out. Yeah, that's bad. That's bad. Get, all you need is one person with the Delta variant. and Yep. And it could be a super kablooey. spreader event. I heard on CNN uh, one of the doctors say the Delta variant, you get a, a thousand times more virus load. Mm -hmm. So that's the concern is that you're really mm -hmm. shedding. Yeah. And even if you're not very sick because you're vaccinated... Um, and and this is another thing. My my wife, who's in the healthcare profession, uh, has heard that, uh, you know, what what the medical profession considers mild. So if you're vaccinated, you might get a breakthrough infection. You might get a mild case. It's still horrible. Oh, that's not good. It's still it's, it's still it's, terrible. It's, it's just not terrible. it's not killing you. <laughs> it's just not killing you. You're not in the hospital on a ventilator. <laughs> Doctor Mom will have something to say about that. Wow. I'm sure. But, wow. uh, you know, you don't want to get it even if you're vaccinated. Uh, look, Dr. Mom says in the chat room, actually, I've already been put on standby to start giving vaccine boosters this fall. My my sister got the Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccine, the single shot, and her doctor just now, just the other day said, I'd like you to get one of the Moderna or, or Pfizer as a booster. Right. Uh, and she did, and it made her feel funky for a couple of days. Oh, but good for good for him and her. I yeah, guess Dr. that's it's a little unknown, but at least it's not unsafe. Right, exactly. Doctor Mom just said mild means no need for hospitalization or ventilator. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it means. It doesn't mean you're not going to be miserable. <laughs> so yeah, be careful out there. So uh, so yeah, I need to I need to um, 
I need to sign up for YouTube TV. I, I really do. And uh, yeah, I mean, I sh I'm overpaying for cable because well, I have cable and you have then cable I, too. I have I cable have with everything. Too. Yeah, but I kind of feel like, well, that's my job is kind of monitor all this stuff. Yeah, so. yeah, I kind of feel the same way. Yeah. But I did. I, I was going to tell you, I, I visited some of your old haunts in Santa Cruz. I went right by Santa Cruz High School. Uh, the music teacher there, uh, when he was, he, he, I told him, I said something about your name, and he said, I remember a Laporte. No. Yeah. What's his name? Bill Wright. Oh, yeah. He was Bill there. Wright? Good Lord, he must be 100. Well, he's over, <laughs> he's over 70 now. Um, but Because uh, <clears throat> I was there in class of 73, so what is that, 50 years ago? Uh-huh, almost. Well, we were all we were celebrating the, the group that I was re having a reunion with up there. Uh, is we we started in '74, so we were almost at 50 years, and you're almost at your 50 year reunion. <laughs> yeah, two years and from he now. He remembered your name. I mean, you weren't a musician. Bill Wright. No, no, no. I liked Bill. Bill and I were buddies. That's funny. I think oh, we've good. had this. What's weird? And I guess we're getting old. We've had this conversation before, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I can't remember it. So yeah, I know. <laughs> At least he remembers me. Yeah, he d he did. He remembered your name. Yeah, because my uh, I was the only uh, one of my family went to Santa Cruz High. Mm -hmm. My sister went to a different school in Santa Cruz. Uh, she went to she was yeah she's younger than me, so she went to the middle school there, mm -hmm. and then for high school went to uh, Athenian, which is a private boarding school in uh, oh, the okay. East Bay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Bill Wright's a, a wonderful guy. He's the leader of this brass group that that he he's he and his ex-wife started, uh, and we we played many gigs, uh, including the Music of the Spheres series at Lick Observatory. We actually played in the dome of one of the giant telescopes up on Lick Observatory on Mount Hamilton, uh, outside of San Jose. What an experience that was! Wow. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, Neat. so. Yeah, and Bill is still there in Santa Cruz. Nice. I, I, the... If he's listening, best regards. I, if he's not, I'll, I will certainly convey them. <laughs> <laughs> um, Twisted Mister asked, "Did I find the channels? You mean the U, the uh, Dish Network 4K channels? I I do have them, and at, as when I checked them just before going on the air here." They were empty. They were off the air. So uh, they're supposed to have the Olympics on them. But no. Dang it. I know. I know. Uh, I was hoping for that because um, they Dish, T Dish Network has a 4K HDR channel. And I would love to. Uh, yes, Twisted Mr. F channel 540. Sadly so. Uh, Scooter X says the menus are fast and everything just works. I assume you mean uh, YouTube TV. Yeah, I like YouTube TV a lot. Yeah. I'm now that it's 4K, to. but boy, 85 bucks a month. I really I should. Know. I I was gonna cancel the cable this time around, but then I got a deal on the internet because of it, and I thought, well, right, I'll, I'll right, wait till right. that because they they you know they lock you in for a year, and once that once that expires, I'll cancel TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, Edmonton Euler guy says that Sony TVs have ATSC three tuners this year. Oh, nice. I believe I believe the LG does as well. Yeah. So there are some TVs now coming out with ATSC, and there are a number of stations uh, in many markets that are doing it. Uh, the problem is 4K is they're not most of them are not doing 4K yet. Correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Correct. All right, Scott. Have a wonderful week. Thanks. You too. I see will next see you week. next week. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Yeah, that's me. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smartwatches, why your printer won't work, why your email won't work, all that stuff. Why your internet's slow. <laughs> the big three. 8888 Ask Leo. Rod Pyle, our space contributor, joins us every Sunday. He sent me a couple of T-shirts now <laughs> uh, along those subjects. He said uh, he sent me one that said, "Ask me, uh, ask me uh, how to get my printer working and see what happens." <laughs> and I have the new one that says something like, "Ask me if my internet, if your internet's uh, slow, and see what happens." Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask 
Leo, the phone number. No, you can ask any question. I'm here for you. We're here. Again, as I said at the end of the last hour, I started, I've been doing this now. Started doing this in the early '90s, and and the and you know I was I was always doing talk radio my whole life, but I decided to focus on technology not only because I love it because I do, and it's exciting and it's always changing. It's really fascinating what technology is doing in our lives, and boy, <laughs> in the 30 years I've been doing this, it has really changed our lives, hasn't it? Uh, but I also started doing it because I feel like people need we need to band together as users to defend ourselves. You know, to, we need to learn about technology, learn how to use it, not not so we can become masters of the universe, but just to protect ourselves against the people who want to become masters of the universe. And uh, and there, you know, that's going on for sure. So we're in this together. So uh, thank you uh, for Jim for helping Cheryl. And if you've got an answer. Couple of ways to do it. Of course, you can call the show 8888 Ask Leo. There's a, a live IRC chat room going on right now at irc.twit.tv. That's free. I also we also have a podcast network called Twit. This show is on that podcast network, and uh, we uh, we we have memberships uh, on Twit for seven bucks a month. It's called Club Twit. Twit.tv slash Club Twit. And people who are members of Club Twit can also be in the Discord, which is another form of chat. We have a really nice Discord, and the Discord's always running, too. So that's another way we can all help each other. I keep an eye on both the IRC and the Discord at all times so that we can uh, <laughs> so we can see what's going on. And if you have an answer, if you have an answer, of course, join us in one of those places. 8888-ASK-LEO. And if you have a question, I should mention, you don't have to just call. The uh, website is always open techguylabs.com. You can ask questions in those chat rooms, but many of, you know, every show I've done now, 1,812 of them, uh, are up there in the, uh, on the website, including audio and video, but also in text, answers, questions, and there's a search, so you can search for an answer. Uh, that might be a good place to start. I mean, I want you to call, but, you know, if, if you're not listening live or you don't have time to call or whatever, you can always go to techguylabs.com, and that's free. No charge. No sign-up. Nothing. Uh, George on the line from Santa Monica, our next caller. Hi, George. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, good afternoon, Leo. You look well-rested. I am. Glad you had a good vacation. Um, I don't have a question for you. I have a comment about how you always saying how important it is to have a strong password. Yes. And somehow I was looking around on the internet and I, I came across this website. It's called how strong is my password.com. Oh, that's great. So I opened it up and, and looked it up. Go ahead and open it up and look at it. And I put uh, like a 20 character password in and I scrolled just down below and it told me how long a computer would take to hack that. <laughs> Yes. The one I put in was like 30 million years. Does it look nice? If you now, there's two things to know about that. First yeah. of all, that's right now, but computers are getting faster, and it, it is predicted, although it hasn't happened yet, that newer computer systems based on newer technologies like quantum computing might shorten that time dramatically. So oh. that's why you always want to use a pa – you shouldn't go, oh, I'll be safe forever. You always want to use a long, strong one. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that worries me is when you said my password. You should have more than one. You should have a different password for everywhere you go. You know that, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But the, the one I put in there was like three passwords combined to make the 20 characters. Yeah. Long, so I the way you make a password better, better is by – one, by making it longer, for sure. Uh, eight characters better. is – not half as good as 16. It's dramatically, exponentially worse than 16. And 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 20 is even better. Uh, so yeah. long as long as you can. And then as random as you can. And there's a problem with that because random is unmemorable. You know, if your password is a random mix of upper and lowercase letters, numbers, and punctuation, and it's 20 characters long, that's, that's what we call a strong password. It's also completely unmemorable. In fact, I think it turns out the better your password is, the harder it would be to memorize it. I think that's the case. Right, right. Because there's no right. order to it. That's why I recommend password managers, because they both generate good passwords 
and they remember them for you. But you still need that one password, my password, the one you are remembering, because that one is the one that unlocks the password vault. So that one you can't put in the vault. You need to know it. So right. that's oh. that's good. The one you just made up would be a good password for your password manager, for instance. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> how is it? How um, how strong is my password? What's the What's the uh, website? How strong is my password? Yeah, how strong is my password dot com. All right, cool. Then you bring it up and you'll see. And I put the I put the password in capitals, letters, numbers, and everything. Twenty characters long. Yeah. And it comes out thirty you, million like, years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah, that's good. I think that's enough. Uh, it's actually not hard to make a password just a little longer and a little more random that is so long that it would uh, actually be, take longer than the the uh, life of the universe. It would be past yeah. the heat death of the universe if a computer, a current day computer, but that's the key, current day. That also raises a whole bunch of other issues about retroactive password cracking. Well, that, we'll save that for another show. But yeah, it sounds yeah. good. How strong is my password? I'm going to use that. Yeah. Check it. If you're using a password as your master password, but again, yeah. you should never reuse a password because if you have a super strong password, even if you have a super strong password, if that password leaks out in a password breach, which happens all the time, then they'll just, they don't need to crack it. They'll just re, they'll just well, try it. I, I take a sentence and I use the first letters of each word. And, and then yeah. I have numbers and capitals. That, that's actually a good way to. I do that as well. That's for the one that you need to memorize because then you can kind of reconstruct right. it. It looks random, right. but I should point out it isn't random, and the and really it's not as strong as a truly random password because there is a pattern to it. So right. And by the way, it's. I think it's. I'm looking for the site, but I. Is is it how strong is my password? I don't think that's. Is it how secure is my password? Yeah, maybe that's it. How yeah. secure is my password? How secure is my password.net? Yeah. Yeah. When I Google how, how secure is my password, I get how secure. It's a password strength checker at security.org. Now, can you think of one thing wrong with doing that? I'm trying to think. Uh, Are you giving them your password? No, I'm just creating one. And no, I'm I know, but when you type it in, who's getting it? Oh, I'm using it from my mind from... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then you're yeah. typing it into a web page. Into a web page, yeah. Yeah, right? So who's getting that password, yeah. that web page, right? Yeah. Yeah. So be careful about that. In this case, I think you're okay. <laughs> There's also... How strong is my passwords.com? See, I'd be nervous about how strong is my passwords.com. That's not grammatical, and isn't that a red flag when we get an email from somebody and it's not grammatical, that maybe it isn't real? Be very careful about entering passwords into random websites because you're giving that website your password. That website's now recording your password. You've given it to them, which means your password is not strong. It's cracked. So it's not a bad idea to try this. But don't reuse that password now because you've given it away to somebody. Um, uh, we have a sponsor, Bitwarden Password Vault, one of many very good password vaults out there. And they have a site, bitwarden.com slash password strength, that I would trust more than how strong is my passwords.com. <laughs> you, see, you see the problem here? You're giving that website your password. <clears throat> There is a site that I do recommend called Have I Been Pwned? And they take great care in making sure that your password, when you enter it, because they do have a password checker in there, is not being sent to the site. So if you go to Have I Been Pwned, not owned, but pwned, P-W-N-E-D dot com, that's kind of part of the problem is what? <laughs> Uh, they have a password checker that doesn't check the security of your passwords, but actually compares it to the more than half billion passwords that have been exposed in data breaches. See, that's a problem, too. Honestly, 
it's fine to have a good, strong password. You make up as as you do, George, by making a sentence. You know, to be or not to be, that is the question. And then using the first letters and maybe, you know, mixing it up a little bit with in a way that you can recreate that password. That's fine. But don't enter it into a password checker. And if you do, don't reuse it because you're giving that website that password. It is no longer private. Tell no one. Except maybe your loved ones, people you really trust. That's another thing, by the way, a good password manager will do uh, is allow you to say, these people are my executors, my my loved ones, the people I trust. If I become incapacitated, they'll need access to my bank accounts and all of that stuff. You can give them access. And I've set that up. I set it up with LastPass for my wife and my daughter. Uh, uh, have I, uh, Bitwarden rather, has does that as well. I've set that up with Bitwarden. So if I should become incapacitated or die, they can then send an email saying, can I have access to Leo's passwords? And there's a mechanism, a dead man switch in effect. They send me an email saying, hey, you know, your wife just asked for access to your passwords. Is that okay? And if I don't respond in a period of time, and you can set that, I set it for two days. If I don't respond in two days, then they'll give her the password. But if I respond and say, no, <laughs> she's no longer my wife and she should not have access. <laughs> but it, I think that's a very, it, um, they sometimes call it emergency access. That's a very useful tool. Another reason to get a password manager. Honestly, that's what you should do. And yes, I mentioned Bitwarden, our sponsor, but there's LastPass, 1Password. Uh, there's quite a few good password managers. Those are the big three. LastPass, 1Password, Bitwarden. They're not expensive. Bitwarden has a free tier that's absolutely free, and I think it's $10 a year if you want to keep using the pro features. Uh, it's the number one thing you can do for passwords. It generates passwords, unique, long, strong, completely unmemorable passwords for every site, remembers them. You only have to remember one password, and that's the password vault password. That's the way How strong is my passwords.com? How strong is my passwords.ru? <laughs> That's a good one, too. The haystack, password haystacks is really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should give that out. GRC, we could put that in the uh, chat room. GRC.com. That's the only reason I don't give it out is because Steve insists on doing that dot thing. So frustrating. <laughs> he is very old school. I did go on the Bluefish Mike B. That was really cool. I'll show you a picture. So we went to the uh, Arizona Memorial, which was really moving, very beautiful. You know what's the most moving thing about the Arizona Memorial? So the story, of course, is after uh, the... Uh, Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, attacked Pearl Harbor, December 7th, 1941, a day which will live in infamy. Uh, the Arizona battleship sank with almost all hands aboard. 900 people died. And instead of bringing it back to the surface and burying them, they left, they left them. They made it a military cemetery. So the Arizona Memorial is above the ship and there's 900 people buried there but the thing that's most moving when you go to the memorial is there are many f former sailors from these Arizona survivors who after their death bar had themselves buried there with their shipmates I almost cried Leo Laporte the tech guy 8888 ask Leo the phone number Jeff's on the line from Northridge California hi Jeff Oh, hi, Leo. Thanks for taking my call. Thanks for calling. Hey, you are the savant of silicone. <laughs> not silicon, not silicone. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble with my wife. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> there is a difference. Oh, uh, yes, yes. The silicone savant. I like it. Yeah. Well, I'm having problems with my um, HBO Max and Samsung Smart TV. Okay. Uh, every time I turn the TV on, in order just to access HBO Max, I have to reinstall the app. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, well, well, no, that, that's, a, that's the easy part. Then, um, 
when the program is running, it'll pause, Ugh. and then it'll keep repeating the last couple seconds over and yeah. over and over again until I hit, like, um, um, uh, rewind for a couple seconds, yeah. and then and then it'll go forward. Is your Samsung TV Wi-Fi or direct connected to the Internet? It is uh, Ethernet. All right. it's, it's like I got 200 megabits download. Okay. So it's not your fault. <laughs> How old is a Samsung TV? Uh, it's about doo -doo -doo, uh, less than three years old. It's not very old, but uh, this is one of the reasons I don't like smart TVs. Unlike an Apple TV or a Roku, which are separate internet-connected boxes that then feed uh -huh. the TV, software on smart TVs is often poorly written, doesn't get updated, is older. Uh, for you know, One problem potentially was a poor internet connection, but because you're connected directly via Ethernet to a high-speed connection. I'm not, I'm not going to say it's that. And, by the way, you don't see that kind of problem on Netflix or any other streamer. Uh, correct. Yeah. Uh, Netflix and uh, Amazon Video are perfect. They're fine. So it's not you. It's not your Internet. It's your TV. And the first thing I would do, it's not very old, is make sure you have the latest version of the software on there. I'm sure you do because Samsung will push that automatically. Let, let, me, let me tell you what I've done so far. I've, I've spoken several times to both Samsung and HBO Max. Uh, I've updated the Samsung firmware. I've reset, <laughs> reset the smart hub. I've uninstalled and reinstalled HBO uh, Max. You've done everything. It's, I've rebooted the router. I've, it's not, uh, it's not, I've it's, deleted unused apps. It's just a crappy, it's a, probably a crappily, crappily written program. Uh, often, in fact, Samsung will write these apps, not HBO or whoever has the app. Mm. So this is the reason I generally recommend a standalone internet connection box. To, uh, prefer it to a smart TV. Now, I understand the convenience of a smart TV, but the smarts in a smart TV... You know, there's a number of reasons. A, the software is not very good. B, it's not a very good computer. Uh, you know, they don't necessarily put a very good processor in there, a lot of memory. So there are a lot of reasons why the computer portion of that TV, that's the so-called smart part, is not as good as a company like Roku that sells a standalone. The good news is you can get a Roku for under 50 bucks, and it will do a much, much better job. You know, I was on a, web, uh, a website that's uh, going through all kinds of problems with HBO Max and Samsung, and there were some problems that came up with Roku as well. But um, in the early okay, first of all, in the early days of HBO Max, it was terrible, and there were problems. So a lot of what you'll see is from those early uh, growing period. But it's st stabilized now. I watch H HBO Max all the time uh, on an Apple TV, and it stabilizes just fine. So. I and, it, and and you know so Dr. Mom says she's got a 2019 Samsung doesn't have trouble with HBO Max. It might just be something wrong with that particular model you've got. I don't know, but honestly, in general, always better to use a standalone box and a Roku is inexpensive and works great. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Johnny Jet. Aloha. Aloha. I agree with you that <laughs> Oahu is the best island. Good. At first, I didn't. First, because we're staying on the crazy Waikiki Beach. I said, yeah, why don't you this, get is, off Waikiki this is Las that? Vegas with a beach. This is insane. Yeah. And by the way, the international tourists hadn't even come back yet. So it wasn't even as crowded as it would be normally. So there weren't a lot of Japanese or Koreans? Zero. Wow. In fact, as a result, all the luxury stores were still closed or, on, you know, the duty-free shop was boarded up, you know, because there just wasn't right. any international travel. So um, that's, you know, but that's fine. It was fun. You know, I, the, you know, we had a, the, the hotel, the Waikiki Beach Tower and was right on, you know, our balcony. I looked down, there's the beach. It was beautiful, nice, unobstructed. Nice hotel? Yeah, it's a condo hotel. Okay. So um, we wanted, because we bring Michael, we wanted two bedrooms, we wanted a kitchen and all that stuff. And it was great. It was great. And it was in, relatively inexpensive compared to somewhere. Where, what's your favorite hotel in, in Oahu? Well, it depends if I'm with my, if I'm with my kids, I really like staying at the Ritz Carlton re residences because we do have a kitchen. Yeah, that would be nice. And if I could but afford it's a, that, it's I would. It's off the beach. But yeah. when so this is our view. I mean, it, it was, we were right there. And this is the beach. 
The problem is there's this is jam. This is like must be six a.m. because it's normally there's all these people. There's all these surfers out there too, which is fun to watch. Um, sure. And so this and there's a there's a sea break. So this was kind of kind of I felt like maybe not the cleanest beach, but but. That you're abs it was fine. It was a great location. All the restaurants are there. We had great food, um, a lot of fun. Thank you for the recommendations. We went to the um, Aloha Table, which was the Hawaiian restaurant your friend recommended. It was okay, just great. Oh, good. Um, and so you know, and Chris Ruth's Chris Steakhouse was great. Uh, we we Ruth's had a lot. Chris, you went to Ruth's Chris? Yeah, I know. Isn't that crazy? But it was really good. It was really good. I wasn't on, I wasn't going to eat loco moco all week. <laughs> <laughs> or spam with soup. I'm not going to eat that all week. Did so, you go to Duke's, by the way? No, couldn't get into Duke's. Would okay. have liked to. But and, then we went, and there's Lisa on the balcony. So this nice. is the, it's a nice view. It's a really nice view, I think. And there's the Royal Hawaiian, the Pink Hotel. That's that's that, I love staying there. I, I, I want to stay there or the Moana the Surfrider in the old building because those are the yeah, I love both the, of those. Those are the original hotels. So. Yep. But no, and then we, we got tours by locals, so uh, thank goodness we did because uh, we wouldn't have been didn't able have to see the Arizona. I mean, the tick, you couldn't get tickets to that, so we went. The, this was the first one we did to the Moana Falls Trail. That's and beautiful. It, it was so beautiful. So it was beautiful. It's raining too, huh? Yeah, it's always raining, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it's like, it seems like it. pretty drizzly there. It's like a, a rainforest. There's Kirk, our guide. He was fantastic. Um, he took us uh, to... He brought... He brought um, those donuts from uh, Leonardo's. What are they yep. called? Mom Leonard's. Leonard's, rather. The um, Mal Malasadas. Mal Malasadas. He, we drove by Leonard's. There was a line around the block. He said, yeah, you really can't get in there. And then when we when we park at the falls, he said, but <laughs> and they're still warm. I, I went early and I brought them. And it was so sweet of him. That's nice. And then we went to a Lily Ha Bakery and had Cocoa Puffs with another guy. So I had plenty of the Hawaiian. Oh, good. Oh, and the best one. Shave ice? Didn't, I didn't have any shave ice because I, I think I know what shave ice is. I don't, the kids, everybody, at least they had shave ice. I, I don't need ice with the syrup in it. <laughs> I don't. But I, I do. You do? Yes. I we love went it. to the North Shore, Giovanni's Shrimp Truck. Nice. That's a great truck. Oh my God. Long line? Well, we, timing was great. Our guide brought us, we were driving by. I said, let me, let me out. <laughs> She parked while I got in line. There was only there was only a few people in line. Oh my God! That's so great. it didn't take too long to get it. And there's it, it a official macaroni salad too. It's travel time with our travel guy. He's been everywhere, Mr. Johnny Jet. JohnnyJet.com. He's got my his Aloha shirt. Aloha shirt. Tori Richard, right? Is uh, that where you said to go? For no, the Aloha shirts. No, it's a different. Company. Tommy Bahama. No, I don't it's remember. not Tommy Bahama. Um, <laughs> anyway, I didn't buy because I have so many Ray, Aloha uh, shirts. Some with an R. Oops. There was also a store. I was told you don't call them flip flops; you call them slippers. slippers. And there was also a just slippers store. <laughs> I haven't heard of that one. <laughs> I got my slippers. I had the uh, spam. Was it was musubi? The spam uh, sushi. For breakfast one day, I had a loco moco, which is a bowl of rice with a hamburger patty and a fried egg on it. Great. And the best thing, though, the garlic shrimp from Giovanni's Shrimp Truck up on the North Shore. Wow, was that good? Was that I good? So thank you. You said you liked Oahu. That was your favorite island. I, I yep. mean, Maui's pretty great, too. But Maui's great. Listen, I love Big Maui, Big island's too, great. But Hawaii's great. They're all if great. If I had to live on an island, it would be oh, Oahu. Oh, for sure. Because there's everything there. There's exactly. there's the countryside. Target. There's everything. There's a big city. There's <laughs> yeah. lots of tourists. It was pretty crowded. So, uh, COVID restrictions still pretty strong there. You had to, every restaurant, you had to give them your name, address, and phone number so they could uh, wow. contact trace you. Um, and how about coming in with the uh, app? Did you have any problems? Was it a long wait no, once you landed? No, easy peasy. So, why four days before we left, changed the rule that you only needed a vaccination card. If, if you didn't have it, you still had to get tested. And when you arrive at the airport at San Francisco, Hawaii, uh, we went on United. I'm sure Hawaiian does the same thing. They do. Little kiosk. You go up. 
you've, you've, you have, uh, beforehand, we went to travel.hawaii.gov, filled out the form, uploaded the card, get a QR code. You show them the QR code. They put a blue, blue, blue wristband on you, and now you're good. And never, never a problem again. I had a QR code when we arrived in Hawaii. That was the easiest thing ever. So that was great. Um, I was sitting on the way back, Flow United as well, woman in front of me was loudly complaining because she, she didn't want it. She said, I'm a Republican. I'm not getting the vaccine. Okay, fine. I don't know what that has to do with anything. But anyway, I'm not going to put that in my body. Okay, fine. Uh, we flew in yesterday, she said, and they wouldn't accept my test. So I'm going home. That's beautiful. She turned around and went home. Kick her out. I mean, yeah. listen, it's, it's, it's nothing to do with being political. No. We, there have, you know, everywhere, rates are going up. And uh, because she wasn't willing to get vaccinated, she had to get a test and apparently just decided, I don't know where she got the test, Joe's COVID test or something, because they did, the state wouldn't accept it, said, no, no, we told you, you need a PCR test. This is not it. So you have to quarantine for yeah. two weeks. She said, I'm going home. It's crazy people are making it this political. It's not political. It's a health crisis. And unfortunately, you know, I was just reading in the news yesterday that Hawaii has a big spike. I don't know if yeah. I assume you, that was Delta all variant. Over. I mean, it's everywhere, unfortunately. Yep. Delta variant. Yeah. Uh, we were I've fine. We masked now, it up. It broke through. You mask up, not outside, but you mask up everywhere inside, um, which is fine. I was used to that. We. Uh, it was a little uncomfortable wearing a mask for the entire five hour flight, but I did. Uh, that's the FAA requirement. Um, and, you know, that's fine. In fact, they even say if you're going to eat or drink, <laughs> you take a sip, put the mask back on in between sips. So they're really well, that's pretty e serious. Each flight attendant's different. Some are like, they don't care. But, you know, that is the rule, and that's what most people do. Um, but I, I, I'm, I've seen both flying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It so, was fun. I, I'm, I'm so glad we went. Uh, it's still not 100%, you know, Back to normal. We did not try to rent a car. We, what we did is we booked tours uh, with uh, locals from a site called touresbylocals.com. And they came and picked us up and drove us places, which was great. And That's man, a smart thing to do. That's I was, a great tip. I was telling people about the uh, Arizona, the, the Pearl Harbor Memorial, which is incredibly moving. As you're going out, uh, there, you have to take a little boat out to the Arizona Memorial. This is where the battleship Arizona sank with... Uh, a 900 aboard uh, who died and are buried there. It's a now a military, uh, uh, you know, um, graveyard. And um, like Arlington, like the Punch Bowl, where, the, where many others from Pearl Harbor are buried. And, uh, and so they say, this is not an attraction. <laughs> this is a memorial. Please be respectful. Everybody takes off their hats. We get in. Very moving. They have the... It's just a simple memorial with a list of all the people who died on, on the ship who are buried there. But the thing that made me cry, and I did, I, I teared up, there's additional names that are added of people who survived Pearl Harbor, survived the Arizona sinking, but who decided they wanted to be buried with their shipmates later. And there's even people from 2000s um, who, who are buried there on uh, in that memorial, and it's very moving. So I was very I, glad I got we to got meet to meet one of those soldiers. Did you? I went, and they and they had. I don't know how many are living. I now. doubt I very many, many. Yeah, because it's eighty years ago. This is the eightieth anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. I, this guy was old when I met him, and it was like ten years ago. Yeah. But um, and seeing the oil seeping up. There's the still water, oil. There's still a little oil coming up from it. I mean, that is emotional as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. The whole thing worth but it. I do love Oahu, and I'm glad to hear that the. It was easy once you get all your testing and, and, and if you were vaccinated, it's, you know, it's so much easier. And that's going to be the way around the world. France, by the way, just said this week that to get into the restaurants, the movie theaters, you need to be vaccinated. Prove it. Um, if you're an American, you have to go to a pharmacy in France or to a doctor and show your card and they will give you a QR code. That way you can enter these things. Italy is going to be doing the same in August, they're saying. So, unfortunately, COVID's picking up around this, this Delta variant. I've had friends that actually have been fully vaccinated and now have been, um, have caught it. So, unfortunately, the, you know, one of them had to go to the hospital, but, you know, they're not dying. So Yeah, but they're telling, uh, Dr. Mom, our, my, my internet physician is telling me, even a mild case is no fun. No yeah, my fun. Buddy went so to the hospital this Be week. careful. Yeah. That's, I, I put my, uh, I put my uh, vaccination card on a lanyard. 
<laughs> and I wore it everywhere. Well, there's a company that sells <laughs> shirts that have actually a clear pocket here where you put oh, the nice. vaccination card in there. This is kind of like that. I'm used to wearing these, uh, you know, going to conferences. I wear a lanyard around my neck with a conference pass, so I just wore my, my COVID pass. Right. Uh, get vaccinated, folks. It's for you. It's for the people around you. Um, it's really important, and it's completely Definitely. safe. We're all vaccinated, and... Uh, no ill effects. It's uh, it's worth doing. But I still use caution. Um, and still use and caution. I'm totally. going to Mexico in uh, in uh, October. Well, uh, I hope to go to Canada in two weeks because they just opened they open the it up. You August get to see 9th. your family. Yay. You have to be fully vaccinated. You cannot get it unless you're fully vaccinated. That's uh, wonderful. My kids aren't going. Because they can't get vaccinated. They're too young. They can't get vaccinated. That's who we're getting vaccinated for to, to protect the youngins. Yeah. So, and keep in mind that you got to be 14 days in advance, you know, your last vaccination to get into Canada and they're going to be strict yeah. and they're going to open it up to the world on September 7th, but August 9th for vaccinated, fully vaccinated Americans. Good. But we'll see how that goes, you know, with everything so fluid right now. Travel to is to me, the you know, after my family and, and my radio show, which I love, travel is really high priority for me. And I'm, I, I, I really look forward to getting back. So I want everybody to be safe and take care of themselves and, uh, and so that we can get back to uh, normalcy if, if we can. And be sure be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Use yep. caution. Yep. But By the way, uh, I should mention, we're doing a, a cruise, my podcast network. It's the Twit Cruise coming up in July of next year. By then, it'll be fine, right? July 2022. Let, let's all hope so. I mean, I, 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 they say it will be. I'm hoping. Everyone told me a year and a half ago it's going to take a couple I know, of years. So, I know. yeah, a couple of years. Um, a couple of years. They but one right. of your readers sent me an email saying that they booked that cruise and they hope I'm on it. And I was like, you know what? If we book a lot, you'll if see me the there. The more we book, the more we can crossed. bring. We've got. Uh, I'm going. Paul Thurot, our Windows Weekly host, is going. If you want to know more, cruise.twit.tv. Twit is my podcast network, cruise.twit.tv. I'd love to bring you, Johnny. Maybe we'll just pony up and bring you. No, 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 no. I, 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 I can bring the whole family. We're going to Alaska, July next year. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. It'll be fun. You know, I think maybe that's what we'll do, because I think we signed, you know, we'd never done it before. They didn't know us. So I think we signed a deal that maybe wasn't as generous as, you know, because when I was doing those geek cruises, he'd get a ton of extra rooms. I bet. But we only... Holland America? I, yeah, Holland America. But I think we only got, through Travel Store, I think we only got one extra Listen, I room. work with those guys. They're great. They actually, we were supposed, my whole family was supposed to go on a Holland America, Alaska cruise last summer. I've done one. We, I did it before uh, on the Osterdam. This is on the Eurodam. I can't wait. I love Holland America. I've never been on Holland America, and I've never been on a cruise in Alaska. I've been to Alaska multiple oh, we times. We gotta bring you. But um, so I've never been on a so the, I think we got one extra cabin. We made that mark, which was sixty signups. Uh, but I don't think we get it, even if we get one hundred fifty signups. So we don't I get will more work cabins. Alone. Don't 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 you worry about me. Because well. Otherwise, you know, I'm going to talk to Lisa and we'll just spring for it because I'd love no, no, for, for I, you I, and the family I, 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 to go. I, 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 will, I, will, I will do it. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Um, so where, by the way, I would like to plug that. Where, where do I, where do I, cruise it on the twit, I haven't seen it. Cruise.twit.tv. Cruise.twit.tv. Yeah. All right. I will plug that. Yeah, I thought we got an extra one every 30 cabins to uh, Big Island, Hawaii. I was misinformed. I said, after I said that on the air, Lisa said, uh, no, <laughs> that's not how it works. You After the first 30 cabins, you get one, but it doesn't continue for some reason. Is Kim going? No, no one's going. Just me and Paul Thurot and our wives. That's right, it. Well, unless we, the whole, unless we, we can... Crew. We got it. Well, I think the theory, I don't know. Maybe we made a bad deal. Lisa's really good at negotiating. I don't, I think probably it's because we'd never done it before. So they didn't want to offer us the moon. Maybe we should have said no. We, you know, we will only do it if we get a, a you know, get right. to another cabin. I think the other thing is they're not sure what demand will be. In fact, one of the clauses says they can claw back cabins that they have uh, allocated to us but are not yet reserved if they have enough reservations. Restrictions? Yeah, I th I suspect they're just unsure what it's going to be like July 2022. Is there going to be a huge demand or I no mean, demand at everyone all? Everyone is. Although the airlines and the cruise lines this week came out in their earnings calls and both said that bookings are, and you know th they can't really BS on this, but they all said that um, the bookings are really strong. They're not worried about a huge downturn. 
but they are, are obviously there could be some because of the Delta variant. And I, I kind of disagree with them. I think there is going to be a bigger downturn than that, but let's hope not. The um, TSA numbers are holding steady. 2.1 again By the yesterday. Way, I was so worried that we'd have long lines that they have, they've done a great job. It was quick getting through the TSA, both coming and going. No TSA, problems. You have TSA pre? No, you have clear? No, regular. Wow. At SFO. At SFO and uh, but SFO and has a private. They're, they're a private. I think they're the only private security firm. No, it was TSA. It, they ha they have badges that look just like it, but oh. not uniforms. Oh, I they used know. to be. Okay. I have to see that. I I haven't been in SFO in over a year, but um, yeah, it's a private company under the contract. It's Interesting. Not TSA. It was easy peasy. They'd obviously expected throngs and they put on more agents so it was very easy getting through in fact it was and polaris was beautiful although it's weird because it's all single seats you can't like i can't sit next to lisa she's right. across a partition and but and because of that i think because there's so much hard plastic around you they make you wear a shoulder belt yes i thought that was interesting uh, not, uh, not uh, an economy uh, but on only, every seat or is it certain seats i think it's a no all of backwards. polaris they said Okay, because I've been on, air, you know, airlines. They said, if you're sitting in Polaris, make sure you use your shoulder belt. Okay, yeah. But it was very it, nice. It, we it, got a meal. Uh, in fact, even in economy, they, they went around with meals, snacks, and uh, beverages and stuff. I thought they weren't going to do that, but they've I guess they've eased up. Hey, did I got to run. the halfway to Hawaii game? The halfway to Hawaii game? No. Did, did you hear them play it? They must have played it. No. Okay. All right. See you later. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888, ask Leo. That's the phone number if you've got a question, you want to talk high tech. I'm here for you, baby. Paul's on the line from Columbus, Ohio. Hello, Paul. Hey, guy. How are Welcome you? Back. Thank you. It's nice to I'm be good. back. I I'm missed good. you guys. Yeah. Um, you're bringing back memories. I was in the Hawaii and the uh, Memorial back in 2006. And the first thing I thought of when you mentioned that was the oil, the yeah. oil uh, still coming up. This is uh, a little time, bit of oil slick still, still. Yeah. At that time, there were still um, veterans that had been, you know, there at the time that were welcoming. Ah. Uh, yeah. There's nobody there now. You'd be, you'd have to be almost a hundred. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That, that was emotional to begin with to get on the on the little ferry boats and the. the um, uh, tenders and and those guys were there. It was. It was oh, I'm was, sorry that I didn't get to do that. That would yeah. have been pretty neat. My dad was in World War II in the Pacific, so that even was a little. Oh wow! A little yeah. more inspiring. Great submarine yeah, museum. Yeah, They've yeah, redone yeah. that, and the Bowfin is there, and it's a wonderful tour. So I recommend that too. It's it's great. That we didn't get great. to see the Missouri and the Oklahoma. We ran out of time, but yeah. uh, it was a it was I was it was the number one thing I wanted to do in Oahu. Yeah. I'm very glad I got very, to do that. Very, very good. Yes. Yeah. Um, we get me all teary here and I got to, I know, I know it's quite moving. <laughs> yeah. So what's your question? Which also, by the way, technology makes me teary too. I should point out. Yeah. Real, that's the point. Yeah. yeah. Different ways. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I got surprisingly for my birthday last a couple of weeks ago, I got a photo Epson photo scanner. Oh, those are great. The fast photo. Yes. That's, that's a right. nice gift. That's a very well, nice gift. Family, Family went together to get it, and I was uh, the most biggest surprise I've ever had. Oh wow! Uh, we've got all these photos from the, my mom who passed away a couple of years ago. That's, we got boxes of, of prints. That's the only negative on this gift is guess what, Dad? <laughs> so, no, that was the in, that was my intent all along. Oh, you wanted to do that? Good, yeah, because it, it'll scan all those prints, and now you can give them to everybody in the family. Yeah, everybody has to have exactly. access to them, which is great. I was getting all nervous trying to split stuff up. Anyway, we started to hook it up. And uh, it says right in the documentation that they use WPS as, you know, on the Wi-Fi security. So they tell yeah. you to do the, you know, plug it in yeah. and then go push the WPS button on your router. Well, I've got an Eero and there, there is no such thing. And there should not be a WPS on that router exactly. because WPS is horribly insecure. Yes. But when the fast photo was created by Epson, that was how everybody, you remember that, one button push, everybody connected that way. It is not the only way to do it. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah, well, 
I, there, I've got an Epson printer and managed to get it connected. So what what's the trick that I'm missing here? Because I I, I I haven't been it successful yet. Yeah. Um, connected to my Eero. Interesting question. And I have the same scanner and an Eero, and I'm trying to remember what I did. Is there on the, which I don't because it was a couple of years ago. Is it on the front? Is there an LCD screen that allows you to configure Wi-Fi? No, it's in the software. It's in the Epson on the software on the computer. So there is no, there's no front panel interface on the fast photo. Well, there's a, a button to turn it on and there's a connect button that we did use that. and that, that it, That's it probably the WPS it. button, yeah. Because okay. you can manually, WPS is not required to join a Wi-Fi network, as you know. Otherwise, the Euro wouldn't be a yeah. very good purchase. You can manually enter in the SSID and the password. And I'm thinking uh, you're going to have to do that on the software if it okay. doesn't have a good front panel. But there's no way that that won't work. It's just a question of finding where you enter that information as opposed to WPS. The whole idea of WPS is, oh, you don't want to have to enter a password. Just push a button. And it turned out it was easily hacked. It was a terrible system. Right. So is there a, a, a standard password that comes with it, or do we create one? It's your Wi-Fi password. So oh, it, just the Wi-Fi password. Yeah, in the Epson scanner software, um, I, here's what you might have to do. In fact, I th I'm trying to remember. I think this is what I did. You might have to connect up a USB cable just this once. The first time. The okay. first time to configure the scanner right. with the with the Wi-Fi SSID, the name of the Wi-Fi signal, you know, whatever your Eero okay. name is, and then the password. After that, you can disconnect the USB. It'll work wirelessly from that. Okay, super. That's what I was thinking, that I hadn't tried that yet. I got distracted on a couple of other things and had gone back to it. But, uh, okay, well, that, that that makes a lot of sense. Real quick, what do you recommend for um, thinking of using it with this through the computer? A um, The best um, backup hard drive, potentially portable. Um, the... the so almost any, you know, you go to a big box store and you get a Western Digital or a Seagate or a Hata I mean, almost any of them will be just fine. As long as you don't assume that they will never lose anything. Well, of course. Right? Yeah. So yeah. there's there's no, I, and this is something that the people who have the Western Digital, uh, My Passport, or what was it, you, you, something live, my book. my book Live, my book live. learned uh, because it, they all got erased by a hacker. And then right. the people who had copies of it were going, wow, well, that's terrible, but I'm okay. The people who th said, oh, I've got it backed up because it's on that, learned a lesson. One copy of anything, I don't care where it is, is not a backup. So as long well, as... I've got iDrive. Yeah, I've perfect. IDrive. Perfect. I will, I will back it up. So it's belt and suspenders. And the idea is a local backup is great because it's fast, it's easy, it's right there. But you should always have a fallback if something should go wrong with that local backup. Yep. So I'm just looking at the, uh, actually, somebody sent me the manual for the uh, fast photo. And uh, there is a whole Wi-Fi networking section that allows okay. you to set up network scanning. First, manually configure your scanner to connect your network. And I, th I sus you, you do use the scan to utility, but I suspect, it, it'll describe it in the manual, but I suspect you have to connect the USB cable. That would be my guess. Yeah, I, I'll do that. I... Uh, I think we had to download the, the manual. I didn't go, apparently didn't get through all of it to find that section. So th this makes sense because, you know, most printers nowadays have a front panel where you can enter that in. Uh, so you don't need to connect it. But if, if there's no way to do it on the scanner, well, you obviously you have to do it in the software and, you, and it doesn't have Wi-Fi access yet. So you'll have to manually connect to it to set it up. Yeah. And, and that makes sense, I guess. Yeah. Hey, enjoy that. How many photos do you have to scan? I don't know because I've got different family members that have their own bags. Oh, they're all going to be coming to you now. <laughs> at least uh, uh, several hundred, if not a couple thousand, ultimately. Oh, and that's mg. Fine. Well, it's a, you know what? You know, I can I can teach them how to use it. That's no problem. And it's fast. That's one of the reasons that's a good choice for you, because it has a, sh a feeder. Yes. So is, you is the is the color correction software or whatever that. Yeah, it's very good. That? 
Yeah. It's yeah, it's very good. Okay. Scan it uh, scan so it at 600 DPI. Uh, you probably don't need to do more than that. If you're really cuckoo and right. you got a lot of storage, you could do it at 12. But, uh, you know, you're going to get a beautiful copy. And yeah. we did this with a family slide some years ago. And now everybody yeah. has a copy. It's great. Plus, I see yeah. it on my, my my Google, you know, hub, I, which has a screen. I have a slideshow on there. Every once in a while, I see a picture of my mom when I was a baby and stuff. And that's great. Yeah. I love that. How how what software can I use so that like if I put a, a photo in a, a folder, keep them in order? Because it seems like depending on how you open it or where you open it from, stuff does not. I uh, used to I used to recommend Picasa, then Google bought it and killed it. Thank you, Google, because they want you to use Android Photos. I mean uh, Google Photos, right. which will do that by the way, and that's probably the best idea. Yep. But Irfan View, there are a lot of photo viewing programs that will do something like that. Um, I just, you know, unfortunately, uh, the best one was Picasso, and it's gone. It's well, hopefully, somebody will put something in the in the show notes. Yeah, and check and look I'll ask, and I'll if I if I see something, I'll I'll, uh, I'll if the chat room says anything, I'll uh, I'll let you know. I'm sure there are good choices. I've heard Irfan View, ACDC. There are quite a few. Hey, hey, hey! How are you today? Leo Laporte, the tech guy here. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches, all that jazz. 8888-ASK-LEO is my phone number. 888-827-5536. That's toll-free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. If you're outside that area, you can still... Um, you can still call. It's just, you know, it's you have to use Skype to do it. But it should still be free. 888 88 ask leo let's go back to the phones to dalton georgia joseph on the line hi joseph hi it's the blind phone man from dalton how are you doing i am well nice to talk to you glad to see you back yes i'm glad to be back people say that and i think they don't you know mean it but i i honestly mean it if my oh, yeah. wife's glad i'm back because uh she <laughs> she gets really tired of me doing uh, 10 minute monologues in the middle of the night well, have I talked to you lately about uh, how Excel can be used to keep track of your table settings? No, and I don't want to hear it. What can I do for you, Joseph? Well, I had my uh, uh, experience with Windows 11, and uh, ah. generally, generally even as a blind user, I haven't had a lot of trouble with it. That's actually great to hear, because I am not, uh, you know, this is uh, the um, topic of accessibility, which is, I think really important in computing. Imagine, you know, if you're blind and, and, and you couldn't compute, you'd be left out of the modern world in many respects. So there are a number of solutions like screen readers. There's even Braille uh, screens, which are really remarkable, that allow uh, people without sight to be able to use computers. But it's always a question. Is this new technology, this new device, how is it going to work? And I'm not a good person to ask because... Even if I put on a blindfold, I <laughs> I can't really tell you. It, it, it yeah. you need somebody who is blind and who's used these other technologies in the past. So I'm glad to hear you tried the you, you're trying the public beta of Windows 11. It's not out yet. Right. No, nothing. I mean, it's the same thing. The insider. Uh, yeah, insider build. channel or whatever. Yeah. And uh, you know the the screen reader I'm using a lot is Jaws, and I also use one called NVDA, which is a free solution, and it it actually worked better than Jaws did. Nice in certain respects. Uh, Good to know. They're working on updating Jaws, of course, but uh, the NVDA people seem to be very quick and responsive. So uh, uh, had some experiences with it, and I finally ran into a problem. Most of the times I've played with Insider stuff, haven't really had too many problems. But I had the one that just cropped up, I guess, probably yesterday, the, the one where the uh, face recognition stopped working. Yes. And uh, turned out all you had to do was go into Device Manager and go into Biometric Devices and delete the, uh, the uninstall, the one, the biometric device that had to do with the camera, and it set it back up when you rebooted and it started working. Yeah, the latest build uh, kerfluggered it. But, uh, yeah, I'm glad you found the fix. It's a pretty easy fix, so good. Yeah, That's that's a relief. Uh, one thing I've been meaning to ask you about for probably about a six or eight months or more, maybe, 
I noticed that OneDrive backs up your documents and backs up your pictures, which I find, uh, you know, that's logical. Uh, but the desktop I find a little bit strange because my desktop is where certain programs get shortcuts put in, but I don't have the same programs on each computer. Right. Uh, and it seems foolish to have shortcuts for everything because my the you know I might have two computers and they won't exactly be the same and I don't right. think, you know one may have Dropbox one may not and Dropbox for some reason places its shortcut on the user's desktop not on the all users but just on the regular desktop so if you happen to use it on one machine and not on the other if you pay it if you just let one drive do its thing you'll have Dropbox it looks like Dropbox is on there of course it isn't because it it uh, it backs up the icon, but not the program. Right. I yeah. don't know why Microsoft. Uh, I guess maybe they thought people would have documents. Maybe some people put documents on. I, their stuff I, I don't think it's that sophisticated. Would, I think it just says, "Oh, he's." Remember that uh, alias on your desktop is just a file. It's a .lnk file. And so it sees the .lnk file and says, well, he wants that backed up too. Uh, it doesn't check to see if that refers to anything. So, yeah, that's. I think it's not, it's not like they're not thinking. <laughs> they're just, this is just the default behavior is uh, you want to back up that folder? Good. Everything in it is getting backed up. Doesn't matter if it's not connected to anything. Um, I don't think there's a simple fix for that, except you could... Oh, you just tell it not to do it. Cause yeah, you could just say, it. don't back up LNK files, you know. No, I, I just don't back the desktop up. Or you could do that. My desktop doesn't have enough stuff on it to worry about. You can, ex you know, with OneDrive and any backup solution, you can exclude certain files. And if you exclude anything with a .LNK extension... Um, it won't back them up. And so you could still back up. People put stuff... Okay, here's the thing, and I don't recommend this. People put stuff on their desktop all the time. Uh, I guess that's why. Yeah, that's, of course that's why. And uh, so it's just another folder. That's all it is. And, and the way Windows is set up is whatever's in that folder slash desktop, we're going to put uh, on, you know, display on your desktop. I see people... It's amazing. You, you, you. Of course, you don't see this because these people don't have screen readers on their computers, so you'll never know. But there are people, and I see it all the time. I, you know, they say, "Oh yeah, something's wrong with my uh, my browser." I said, "Well, let's close it." And they've never closed it, by the way. It's always been open. They close it. Oh, no. so, suddenly, their desktop is revealed, and it's just like a forest of icons. And I say, "Well, what's that?" They say, "Well, whenever I download something, I save it to my desktop because then I can find it." Except that <laughs> you can't find anything in there. It's a mess. So it's just uh, people aren't... People... Uh, look, computers, it's not a native skill. And not everybody yeah. takes to it uh, in the same way. And you know what? There are people who uh, have cluttered desktops. I, am, I might be one of them. Uh, in real life, maybe those people have cluttered desktops in the, their digital life. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So they have to back it up. If you want, you can tell iDrive or OneDrive or any other backup solution. Just uh, exclude the files with these extensions, and that actually is a great solution because then you're not going to you don't want LNK files backed up because they they don't make sense on another system. They point to a file that's not even on that system. One uh, blast from the past I'd like to tell you about real quick. Yes. By the way, the cop king in the chat room is telling me a weird thing, and this is Windows. You're and listening to Leo Laporte, the tech mate. How are you? What is that? That is the, that's an emulation of the ti 994 Oh, my goodness. I thought I, that sounded familiar. That's my old robot friend. Yeah. My goodness. And that, is that a screen reader you're using, or what is that? Oh no! It's 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 a TI emulator. No, it's just an emulator. Uh, cool. It's not it's not the Mame one. You know, Mame has uh, right leg legality issues. But, right. But no, this is one from a website called uh, harmlesslion.com, and he has a, it's called Classic Ninety Nine. Fun. And he got the speech working a lot better on it, and uh, that's that uh, sounds pretty good. Yeah, it's it's really neat. It should be good because the problem was the TN99 had very poor uh, sound synthesis 
chips, you know, very primitive because it was a long time ago. Oh, of but, course. But nowadays we have much more sophisticated capabilities. So you could upgrade that in an emulator. So I'm glad he did that. That's cool. Some purists oh, yeah. might say, no, it should sound every bit as bad as the original. I'm not a purist. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Pleasure you, talking you, to you, Joseph. You know. Thanks. Yeah, you have a great day. Thanks for calling. And thanks for giving uh, us a little uh, preview. Remember, Windows 11 is in early uh, testing. Uh, it may change between now and the release in December, uh, but it's good to know that at least so far works well, especially with NVDA as well as JAWS. And, uh, and, uh, the, ex and the built-in accessibility features are all the same, or they have new stuff? Oh, Narrator is still there. It's been changed uh, slightly, but Good. Narrator, a lot of times it works uh, even with, they try to make it work when other things won't do. Right, also. right. Uh, and so Narrator is always there, and uh, that's a great thing to have. And you know, Narrator is even there if you need to set Windows up with a USB key. Uh, you can make a USB stick, you know, with the media, what is it, media creation tool? Yeah. And then when you boot the computer up with the media creation tool, you can press uh, control windows and then you hold those two down and press enter and narrator will come up there too. So you can set windows up without a sighted assistance that way if you nice. sometimes have a need for it. Companies are really becoming much more aware as they ought to be of accessibility and uh, iPhone it does a great job. Android does. Microsoft actually has a chief accessibility officer. One executive who across all of the divisions is responsible for making sure everybody pays attention to this. Jenny Lay uh, Fleury, she's great. And it's really good that they're doing that. I, I commend them uh, for paying attention to this kind of stuff because it's so important. We all need access to this stuff. Nice to talk to you. Stay, yep. stay listening. Yep. Thanks. Stay safe. Thanks, Joseph. Good to talk to you. Uh, Microsoft does some amazing things. The Xbox uh, controller, adaptive controller for people with different uh, abilities, is is so great. It's so great that they. It, it's about not just. It's not accessibility. It's about inclusive, inclusive, inclusivity. It, that's what it's really about. It's about everybody having access. Everybody getting to use it, regardless. Not making assumptions about your user. I really like Do you ever, do you have a turntable in there, Professor? <laughs> She's laughing. No, no turntables, huh? Well, I actually thought about, because when I started in radio, we had turntables and tape machines. And uh, I th was thinking about, I have the room right here. I could just put a turntable right here. Cue it up. <laughs> eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo. That's the phone number. Yeah, it's been a while. I was uh, somebody, some sharp-eyed person noticed that I have the new uh, iPhone battery, the MagSafe battery. This is do not get this. Ninety-nine dollars. Um, I guess the idea is, you know, if you have an iPhone twelve, anything from the Mini to the Pro Max. Uh, you know, it's got a magnetic back, and you can get the magnetic puck charger. You can also just put this battery on there, and it will start charging. But it's uh, on this phone, it only charges it up like to 40% because there's not enough. The battery's too small. It's a fairly small battery. But I guess it's a little extra juice. You know, the best thing you can do with this, actually, uh, it does take the place of the MagSafe charger because if you connect it with a lightning cable, this little battery pack, it's a hundred bucks. But if you don't have a MagSafe charger and you want to do that MagSafe charging, let's see if I have a lightning cable here somewhere. I don't, but you can plug this battery pack in and now it's a like the puck and it'll charge up your phone. Plus it'll charge itself up. And then when you hit the road, if you're the kind of person that runs out of battery frequently, I guess that's worth it. It. It's just expensive. Anchor has one that's half the price, but it's a little bigger, a little clunkier. You know, Apple's very good at design, and it doesn't fall off easily. You have to sh really shake it hard to get it off. Make uh, somebody in the chat room, Judge is asking, um, would the MagSafe battery be a good paperweight? Yes, it would. It's it's fairly heavy. Make an excellent paperweight and charger. I got it so you don't have to. I guess if I never, I even when I was on an airplane and traveling and, you know, didn't get a chance to charge all day, I've never run 
lower than say 30 or 40 percent on the iphone 12 pro max it's got a lot of battery life i guess a mini maybe it'd be more useful yeah and it'd certainly charge it up more um it's a it's it's out there it's available and uh, I got it so I could take a look at it. And there you go. My mini review. Larry in Tampa, Florida. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Larry. Yes, good afternoon, Leo. Great to have you back. Love your show for years. Bless you. you just get your thoughts as follows. I've got to do some travel or work, and I need to be able to have a basic laptop with Internet and email access and able to handle word processing like WordPerfect with a portable scanner and a separate portable printer. And I just wanted to get your thoughts on the best brand names and hopefully models to accomplish that. I've got to get the equipment very quickly for a trip next month. Nice. And I presume you're going to want Windows, yes? Yes, absolutely, yes. I would recommend for this purpose, since you know, you're going to get a little thin scanner, a little thin printer, it's going to be as portable as possible. The most compact and I think the best... Uh, business Windows business laptop out there right now is the ThinkPad X1 Nano. And the name should tell you it's 13 inches, very thin, but powerful. You can spec it up as much as you want. And of course, the more you spec it up, the more the cost will be. Um, but I think it's a very, very, I'm a big fan of Lenovo's ThinkPads. Um, they used to be very repairable. They're not anymore. In order to get something this thin and light, you've obviously got to a shoe screws and start gluing things in and building things right onto the motherboard. So it doesn't, it's not highly upgradable, highly repairable, but it is very thin, very light. I think very beautiful. It's the X1 Nano. Who would make that, Leo? Lenovo is the company. It's uh, L E N O V O. Yeah, they bought IBM's ThinkPad lines many years ago and now continue to make them. And what's nice is the heritage of the IBM ThinkPad continues. They still have the little nub uh, if you want to use as a mouse, which means you don't have to... The trackpad's good, but if you don't like a trackpad, uh, a lot of I know a lot of people want to keep their hands on the keyboard. That nub works quite well. Uh, the screens are good now. Um, it, it, I think they're excellent. And if you, know, you need this now, the only issue is need it now because, and it's not just Lenovo, everybody, because of the chip shortage, a lot of times you know, you'll have to check a lot of times you'll order something and you may not be able to get it right now. I do see that they have some of these that can ship today. So that's you may not be able to get all the configuration you want. The more you configure it, the would longer it's it, going to take. Would it be able to be able to purchase it directly from Lenovo the way you can? Delta? That's what I would. Yes, Lenovo.com, and I see they have one right now that they said they could will ship same business day, which means you'd get it in plenty Excellent. of time. Would that have some ports for USB? Drive? Oh, yes. Leo oh, yes. Okay. They've done a nice job. Given how thin and light it is, they've given a, given a, done a nice job with ports. You may end up having to get a dongle, but it has a pretty complete set of USB-A and Type-C ports. Uh, it'll do Type-C charging, which means it's a little easier to uh, transport. Uh, I think it's an excellent laptop. Very, very good laptop. And, and surprisingly, given how thin and light it is, pretty inexpensive. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Up to 16 gigs of RAM, good battery life. Um, it has a type USB Type A 3.0 port, as well as a Type C Thunderbolt. Uh, I don't know if it's Thunderbolt 4 or not, but all the specs are on the website, and I think it's a very. I think they've done a good job. I'm I'm a fan of the ThinkPads in general. Excellent. And Leah, would you have? This is really helpful. Would you have a suggestion on a portable scanner and a portable printer, preferably by HP? Um, let me see if HP makes a portable. Sometimes you can get the printer and the scanner in one, which would be... Do you, do you need the scanner to be a sheet scanner or... Yes, sheet okay. only, not sheet only. wand or both. Good, all right. Well, that's that means often that, you know, you'd be able to get a portable printer that... And when I say portable, I mean HP makes... Well, they make thermal printers. I don't recommend that, but um, they make... I, th I, don't know, I hope they have inkjets as well. Maybe it's only thermal. But they make printers that are basically, you know, the size of a typewriter plate. And I don't know what I can compare that to. They're just, they're very, this about as small as any printer could be. Um, but I think they might be, yeah, they're thermal, which is kind of annoying. The reason they do that is they don't, you don't have to have ink 
inkjet. You don't have to have ink cartridges. You don't have to have ink. You just have to have special paper. It's kind of like the fax machines. Not the best paper, though. I bet you want better quality paper than that. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Would they? Would, would you? Would, could you suggest one that would take just standard eight and a half by eleven? Yeah. If you if paper? you're going to have to take a little bit of a bigger one, HP makes sure. what they call a portable office jet. Um, and it's. I mean, it's port. If, it's not not completely portable, but it's more portable, I guess. Let me see. Um, chat room's putting in a PC magazine rating. Uh, they like the Canon Pixma, but uh, HP also makes something called the Tango. Um, no, but is that for photo printing? Yeah, that's more for photo printing. I the Canon Pixma is yeah the can brother makes a pocket jet, but that's thermal as well. I'm just, I'll tell you what, we'll put a link to this PC Magazine uh, review. Their top pick, 229 at Amazon, is the Canon Pixma TR150. It's a wireless portable printer. Um, they don't, you know, they don't have anything for the HP that they recommend. But I'm sure HP, I know HP makes, what is it, the L, L the OfficeJet uh, 200. So um, that's similar in size. Yeah, if you like HP. The OfficeJet. Uh, printer 200. The 200 is portable. They're portable. Um, portable yep. scanners. That's actually an interesting category um, because I think things have changed a lot. Let me just see. Um, just to be able to scan documents to be able to convert them into PDF documents. Right. Um, yeah, Brother Epson. I'm looking at... Uh, I'll put a link again to the in the show notes for this PC Magazine's uh, best portable scanners. Um, Brother makes these. These are really small. The Epson's really small. Um, I think Epson makes the best scanners, so that's probably the one I'd go with. The DS eighty W. DS E W eighty eight zero W eight zero W. Yeah. DS eight zero W. Yeah. Leo, you've been just love the show. Thank you for taking. Hey, my time. pleasure, Larry. It's great to talk to you. Are you going? Where are you going? Oh, just uh, local travel up to Georgia. And oh, okay. Alabama. Sounded like you were going to the Amazon or somewhere. Somewhere. Oh no, just <laughs> grinding on work. Yeah. Okay. Leo, thank you again. Have a great really trip. Helpful, My pleasure, Larry. Thanks for listening. Take care. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo. That's the phone number. Uh, put a link in the show notes to PC Magazine. You know, it's funny. The um, there's so many printers, so many scanners, so many laptops out there, and I. There's no way I could review them all. I try to, you know, partly because I, it's not my main uh, thing is to review these things. And you'd spend, if you know, you're pretty much every waking hour if you wanted to keep up with all of these. Um, and but also because I have the philosophy, I don't want people to send me free stuff. I want to buy the stuff because I feel like that's a better review. If I spent my hard-earned money on something and and use it over a longer period of time, that's going to give you the most. Well the review that's most like how you're going to do it, right? You're going to buy it. You're going to use it a long time. So I try to kind of pick a few things and review those. But PC Magazine is one of the last places around where they do these big print. Remember they used to do big printer roundups? 100 printers reviewed, 100 scanners. They still do those. Uh, and I, I trust the reviewers. I know almost all of them. They're good guys. They work really hard. And uh, that's one of the reasons I don't do it, because they do. So I'll put links in the show notes to PC Magazine's uh, articles on the best portable printers and the best portable scanners. And I have not, I'm so close to buying that X1 Nano. It's such a beautiful machine, but I do have friends who've had it and have used it and really like it. So I should, I guess, qualify my recommendation um, in that respect. It's not something I've tried, but I am a Lenovo ThinkPad fan. I've owned quite a few of them. And if I could just come up with a good reason to buy one, I would. I just, I don't need it. I don't need it. I just don't need it. 8888 Ask Leo. Oh, I know. I, I know. I should buy it so I can tell you about it, shouldn't I? Stacy's on the line. Honey, I got an excuse. I mean, a reason to buy it. Stacy's on the line from Camden. Hi, Stacy. I love your show. Thank got you. A question for you. I, I, I use a laptop in my truck with a GPS program that was uh, discontinued a little over seven years ago. I used to go through a laptop every year, every other year. 
but the disk is gone and I don't, I, I can't put it on a new computer. Would iDrive upload to a new computer? Oh, yeah. So uh, one of the ways people use iDrive uh, is, is exactly that. I'm going to get a new computer. Now, here's the drawback. It's fine if you've been using it all along because you'll have a complete backup ready to go, and then you just get a new computer, sign into your iDrive account, download the software, and say restore, and you're good to go. The negative on this is, and this is true of any cloud backup, I really should explain this to people. The, if you're backing up over the Internet, which is a great thing to do because there your data is totally safe, but if you're backing up over the Internet, it's going to use your bandwidth. It, can't, it has to, right? And your yeah. bandwidth, if you haven't looked, you might check, they give you a big number and a little number. The big number is for downloads. This is kind of an antiquated way to do it because nowadays, because of things like online backup, the little number is just as important. That's the upload number. And often yeah. the big number is 100 and the upload number is 15. So... That's the maximum speed you can upload at. And then it's really important to know that if any program were to use every bit of that upload speed, you wouldn't be able to download anything. It would block downloads, too, because the way downloads work, they have to, you have to send back a, yeah, I got that one, send me the next one. And if you don't have any upstream bandwidth, you can't get any downstream bandwidth. So all these programs, iDrive included, are careful not to use all of your upstream bandwidth. So even if you have 15 megabits up, they're not going to use all of it. They might use half or less. So yeah. take take that little number, divide it in half. That's the speed you're going to be backing up at best that you're going to be backing up with. Now, look at how much you want to back up. Sometimes people say, well, I got four terabytes. I'll see you in about uh, two years because it's going to take a while. So that's the yeah. problem. Yes, you don't you don't have a drive that works on your machine, so you would love a cloud backup solution. The problem is how much data you're going to back up. Do you know off the top of your head how much it is? Uh, it's, it's, it's several gigabytes, but yeah. it's not. I mean, yeah, if it's an older computer, you probably don't have, you know. What I would do is be judicious about what you back up. You don't need to back up programs. You don't need to back up video and photo files. Just back up the stuff you really have to have. And if it gigabytes, it might take a week. But in a week, you'll have a full backup, which you can then restore to a new computer. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, so that's that actually... Work. I can do it that way. Yeah, that's the number one, I would say, the number one reason. After, you know, huge crisis that you lose your hard drive, the next best reason to have a good backup is... Well, I'm scared to, I'm, I'm scared to turn it on now because... Well, I don't blame you. Uh, so yeah. when, when have you last turned it on? Uh, in the last six months. But okay. the computer's five years old. I, I oh, that's not that old. Oh, it'll be all right. Yes, sir. Okay. That's not that old. You're you're all right. I mean, if if you can't turn it on, remember that the hard drive is a separate component, uh, which you can take out of that thing. Even in a laptop, you can take out of that, and then just mount that hard drive. This might be a faster, easier way to do it on the new computer. Um, so let me let me tell you. Uh, now, you did say at the beginning you want to restore your GPS software. That's that's the main thing, yes, sir. I, I don't. The, the disk is is gone. I, I didn't. I'm a little worried about this GPS software. Who makes this GPS software? It used to be Delorme, but Delorme sold out. I think it's the guard. yeah. Uh, they may be. You should make sure first of all. <laughs> The, you know, the Garmin now owns Delorme. You should make sure that, uh, was it the Delorme Atlas? Was that what you were using? Yes, sir. Sure, yeah. 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 Um, you should make sure they still offer that <laughs> as a download. They, they don't. That's, that's, that's the problem. Well, okay. And the, all the data was local on that? It wasn't internet data? It was local data? Yes, sir. So moving a program iDrive is not the best for. In fact, it's very tricky to move a program because Windows, on Windows, it looks like there's one file that's the program, you know, delorme.exe. Uh-uh. Right. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> there, there are DLLs, libraries, often in different directories. There are registry entries. There's a whole bunch of stuff. When you install a Windows program, it spews stuff all over the hard drive, which means getting that, program onto a new computer is never straightforward. So you probably want to get um, a, a, 
a Windows program mover. Often uninstallers will do this because it's in the process of installing and uninstalling. They're also noticing where everything is. So you want to you want to find a program that specializes in moving Windows applications, and even then. It's tricky and may not work perfectly. The, the one I've used for years is from a company called Funduck. F-U-N-D-U-C. I, 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 don't, I don't know how you pronounce that. Funduck. But they have a, <laughs> they have a promotion. It's at funduck.com. They have a program called Application Mover. And it's pretty simple. It's, uh, it's uh, not expensive. And uh, it will do the best it can to move that Delorme app, but it, there's never any guarantees. Yes, sir. Okay. You understand? Well, I, I have the data saved on a USB. So, yeah, but I mean, the data... See, the data without the program, I don't know how... I don't know if they used a proprietary format or if they used a... There are GPS formats, GPS file formats. If they used a standard one, you're golden because there are newer programs that will work with it. So... Um, that's, uh, that's going to be an interesting question. Um, I would try, I would try moving it first, but understand that there's lots of reasons why an old program won't work. Not merely that they don't publish it anymore, but it may connect servers that are no longer there. There's all sorts of tricks to getting this stuff worked. Try, there's a program called Maptitude that will read the old files and work the same. That might be something to look at. Maptitude. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. It's from a company called Caliper. It's not cheap. Wow, is it not cheap? 700 bucks. Jeez Louise. Um, Maptitude mapping software. Oh, I, it's so expensive because it's GIS software. So you were just using the Delorm as like a Thompson guide, I think. But, um, wow, maybe that is not a good solution. That's too expensive. <sighs> you know, um, Mike B., to answer your question, hey, Gizwiz, be with you in a second, Dickie D. Um, I... I don't have any information about Mick. Uh, he called me. We love Mick. Mick's been around for a long time. I met Mick when we did a tech TV appearance in Athens, Ohio, many years ago. I used to call him Mick the Wick because he his wife made candles. Wonderful guy with some amazing stories. A dear, dear, dear friend and a long time uh, chatter and uh, listener. And he had, was experiencing some real health problems. I talked to him about a, maybe two months ago, he called me, and we talked, and he said, the reason I'm calling you, I'm going to the hospital tomorrow, and they say there's not much chance I'll survive the surgery. I went, what? What? Um, and he didn't, I don't think he wanted anybody to know. So I'm only saying this now because I am a little worried about him. Um, I talked to him later, and I said, you, you survived. He said, well, they decided it was really too dangerous to even do the surgery, so they didn't. So I am, I know he's been in poor health, so, uh, and he's usually in here on the weekends. But remember, um, you know, we were on vacation and stuff, so um, I don't know. And Mick, if you're out there and you're listening, send us a smoke signal that you're okay. Because we love you. And uh, he's just, he was a real great guy. He called me when I said, we're, we're thinking of moving to Barbados. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I can tell you how to stay in Barbados for free. He had a fairly complicated scheme involving <laughs> exchange rates. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, he's, he rarely misses a show, so I, I don't blame you, Mike. Of course, we thought we lost you too, right, Mike, remember? And then it turned out you're using a different handle. So if you're in there, Mick... Send us a signal. How are you, Dickie D? I am good, sir. And you? I am Todman. So it's perfect. Oh, my God. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I am good, sir. And you are Todd. Good old, good old Bill Todd. Yeah. Uh, I'm great. We had a wonderful trip. Been showing, I heard, uh, I heard some, showing some slides of it. from our trip. This is uh, the 
Arizona Memorial. The, oh my God! The oil yes. uh, slick is right around here because the ship is underneath. This is a gun turret. Um, the ship is right underneath this memorial, wow. and um, uh, it's still leaking a little bit of oil. So let me see. I think I have some pictures inside. Yeah, there's this in, inside. It's a little blown out, unfortunately. That's actually not how it looks, but the screen is blowing out. But the memorial is written on the wall here. And then below oh, okay. it, there's some additional plaques. Uh, and I was mentioning this of, of uh, people who survived the attack on the Arizona and, the Pearl, and Pearl Harbor, who survived it and continue to live on. But when they passed, wanted to be buried with their shipmates. So they have a procedure... And the most recent one was not so long ago. He must have been close to 100. Divers go with their ashes, and they uh, drop them down into that turret you saw. Oh, my god! Yeah, and so there, there are a couple of dozen wow. um, survivors who are also buried there, which is very moving to me. I oh, think. my yeah. God. I've had meat here. Yeah. That, that have is... you, you've never been to Hawaii, have you? Um... Despite your shirts. <laughs> uh, wait, let's see. Did Bill take us to Hawaii? You don't even remember. I think he did. No, oh, okay. He was so spoiled. Twenty trips. I'm so jealous. It's so awesome. <laughs> Everybody, dance. It's time for disco. Dick D. Bartolo. Didn't Rick D's do a song about you called Disco Dick? I, 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 I yeah, I like, think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was some quacking. We're still involved. arguing over residuals. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dick D. Bartolo, a name that will live in infamy. He is uh, Mad Magazine's maddest writer for more than five decades. He is written in every Mad Magazine. He's also our Gizmo Wizard. That's what we call him, a Gizwiz, uh, who keeps us up on the craziest gadgets and gizmos even as a, as a podcast uh called gizwiz at gizwiz.tv hello dickie d Lil. uh so so this is not such a crazy gadget and uh there was a pepcom event uh online oh maybe maybe a month or six weeks ago and i went into the uh owc press conference and chatted with those guys and they said we're going to send you a little gift and I had the gift. Other World Computing, OWC. Yes. Oh, my Love gosh. these guys. But it's mostly yeah. Mac stuff, isn't it? Well, you know what? It turned out that uh, I have Wi-Fi, obviously, in Disneyland. But the walls of these old buildings are really thick. And it does not go back to my apartment that is just 15 feet away. Ah. So I ran a cable through the wall. And so I have wired internet in the back, but not wireless. So when I took my Chromebook back there, uh, I suddenly realized, oh, Chrome, Chromebooks don't have a way to hook up a hardwired internet. Oh, that's right. And you I need thought, Wi-Fi. Yeah. Wait, my little USB-C travel dock. Oh, I love, you know what? I have this too. You know what? Do you have, do you have the E? It's called the No, C I have the old one, the original. The original. Okay. Yeah. So when I got in there, I thought, Oh, well, now I need a cable. And I said, oh, wait a minute. The cable's built into the bottom on that. this one. Yeah. And so I plugged that in, and then I had a easy way to connect my wife, uh, my cable directly to it. And it has an SD card slot. It has 4K video out. It has two uh, uh, Type A USB 3. And I think it's now USB 3.2. They've upgraded uh, this with more the power. Whole, more yes. power. Yes, this pass-through power is now 100 watts. That's why I got to get it. I got to get this. Yeah. I have yes. the old one. I love it. Uh, the old one, I think, was 60 watts. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah so you take it's the very uh, USB. It's great. Take the USB-C out of my uh, Chromebook, plugged it into this, took that little wire from the bottom, plugged it into where the... Uh, uh, the uh, uh, little Acer power went in, and then I had all these extra little uh, inputs. But you know what? I, I do have a question for you. Leo, if I have a hard wire going back there, is there something, a way that I can make that hard wire into wireless? Sure. I'm glad you asked the tech guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's called a Wi-Fi router. <laughs> oh, but wait, I can't have two routers, Well, right? you can. You just put it in bridge mode. And there are companies that make all of the parts of a Wi-Fi router minus the routing. 
So it's just a basically it's a Wi-Fi radio. I would look at a company called TP Link. And actually, if you'd, okay. if you'd asked me about this earlier, I would have suggested TP-Link also makes something that instead of having to drill a hole in your wall, you could just use your electrical power sockets. You know, Lee, I did that. At the We're on a different electric meters. Oh, if you're not, yeah, you have to be on the same network. It won't work. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So exactly. TP-Link makes, it, under the network expansion, uh, oh, they, okay. they make additional, just basically it's an access point. That you plug into the Ethernet, and now you're on your network via. And you could Perfect. actually, if you really want to be wacky, even give it the same name and password. And then you, your, your Acer, as you went from one room to the other, would just say, oh, oh, I see it. It's over here. It's the same thing. And it wouldn't even, you wouldn't even have to worry about it. You wouldn't have to change oh, okay. Wi-Fi or anything. Okay. So they, they make a number of Wi-Fi range extender type devices. And Perfect. look for one, with obviously, with an Ethernet jack on it. Okay, yeah, and, and and just to remind you on on the OWC thing. Yes, it's very funny on Amazon. They're selling the old one for fifty four ninety five, yeah. and the new one for fifty four ninety five. Oh, so there's no way to distinguish between the two. No, and and even though OWC calls it Travel Doc E. Amazon d drops the E, so just be careful that you, that you get the one that has the hundred watt pass. Hundred watt will tell you when you see that, and that and that'll tell you that that's the new yeah. one. Nice, yeah. This it's compact. It's it's like a hockey puck, but I love it that the cable's built in. It has a little uh, indentation on the bottom. You can just push the cable into, and that means you don't have to bring the cable with you. And for things like going to Hawaii with an HDMI port, I can broad, you know, I can put my uh, laptop on 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 the TV, things like that. It's great, very no, nice. Good. Yeah, it's good. I now agree. You have a few next trip. Now, as long as you're yes. on the website, giz dot. No, I'm sorry. There's no dot. Giz wiz then the dot biz <laughs> gizwiz dot biz. If you go to that website, you you can of course get a link to the other world computing. Travel Doc, when you click the button that says the Gizwiz visits the tech guy, but there's another button you may or may not want to click called What the Heck Is It? A close up of a gizmo or a gadget, the big green button. Or is it big? We don't know because Dick doesn't give you any reference for size. Why would I do that? That would help. And you don't want to help anybody. All you have to do is uh, go there and uh, guess what it is. There are autographed copies of Mad Magazine for up to six correct answers and up to 12 wrong but funny answers. Uh, Dick will have a drawing if more than six come in, of course. And uh, judges' decisions are final, as they say. Which Mad Magazine do we know? Are we playing for? Uh, yes, you'll be getting the October issue, and I don't have a uh, cover... Uh, image yet, but it should should be soon. It's funny you say produced by the now tiny yeah. <laughs> L.A. Mad two staff, person. two people. Yes, that is the entire. And you know, Mad's being sold again. I think we're going to be now part of Discover. Oh well, Discover. Now that's not so bad. So DC Comics owned it, and and they just let it go to heck. Yeah. Well, DC Comics was part of Warner Brothers. Well, there's your problem right there. Yeah. And then AT&T bought Warner Media, <laughs> so we ended up with AT&T. But now they're selling it all off. Yes. Because they they suddenly somebody said, "Hey boss, you know what? We're a phone company." <laughs> who would have who would have thunk it? So That's they're right. selling all the stuff, the That's crap that they funny. can't figure out what to do with <laughs> That's off. That's very funny. So, but Discover would be a good I would hope Discover would be smart enough to bring the usual gang of idiots back and start making new content again. Because right now it's just be best ofs, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Do you know what the topic was? The, I loved the King yeah. Kong one last month. Oh, yeah. The, the uh, uh, Susie told me it's going to be the all sports issue. All sports. Well, you know, a mad magazine when it comes to sports. <laughs> yeah. They're not the yes. most most athletic bunch no, in, exactly. the, in the world. So it should be a lot of fun. Oh, I love it. Well, Dick, uh, have a wonderful week. You too, uh, sir. It's very hot, I know, and it's is it a little smoky? Are you seeing smoke from the Oregon fire? You fires? know, we we did the other day. The sun, I, we were in the walking the dog, and Dennis said, "What is with the sun? Is this the end of the world?" Yes. And it was the smoke. It was 
uh, amazing. Smoke coming all the way across the country from yes. Oregon, of all things. You know, could you open your window and put the fan, Holy face the cow. fan the other way? Yeah, really. <laughs> well, oh, so it's cleared up. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, okay, that, yes. I think the fire's almost out now in Oregon, too. Oh, great. Great. Thank you, Dickie D. Okay, buddy. Have a wonderful See week. week. Is with dot biz. Thank you, Professor Laura, our musical director, Kim Schaffer, the phone angel. Most of all, thanks to you for joining me. My time is up. My time. I'm sorry. Three hours a, a, a day is not enough to solve the computer's, the world's computer woes, but I try. I try. TechGuyLabs.com, the website, will have more information. And I'll be back next time. I hope you will, too, because I, I really couldn't do it without you. Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy. Have a great Geek Week. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, TWIT, T-W-I-T. It stands for This Week in Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security on Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And, of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon, This Week in Tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guys show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.